Traveler, it so happens that a friend of yours asked me to pass on a message when I saw you. Someone left a message for us? Huh, who could it be? My beloved retainer, have you noticed that silver thread of which fate is woven, now twisting and twining itself around you? The Aug de Vertilung does... Mm, does... Grossen Kaleido Phantasmus will be watching you. <sighs> well... Apologies. This message is unusually difficult to recite. Would you like to hear more? Uh... Definitely sounds like Fischl's note. What should we do? We'll be watching you as you step into the glorious castle of the Immer Nockreich. Come to me at once, swear an oath to me in my blessed name, and we shall journey together to the depths of the world. Anyway, to summarize, Miss Fischl asked me to ask you to go to the plaza in front of the cathedral. Please meet her there when you have the time. She said that she will be waiting for you. Oh, Fischl. Such a mystifying message for such a plain and simple request. Well, if Fischl's expecting us, then let's not keep her waiting. Let's head towards the Cathedral Plaza. There she is! And Mona, too! Welcome, welcome, most loyal attendants of the Princessin. Which one is it, retainer or attendant? Make up your mind. My apologies. Main Fräulein tends to use exaggerated expressions when she's in good spirits. Hey, Fischl! You were looking for us, right? Sounds like the fun started with Dadas. What's got you in such a good mood? And so, the Whisper of Eternal Night summons you back to my side. Mm, splendid. What a blessed reunion. A boon from beyond the eventide. Come, partake of this joy with me, my subjects. Traveler, Paimon, it's a pleasure to see you again. Main Fräulein and I extend to you our most sincere greetings. Proper hello too, but Paimon has no idea how to uh partake. A normal person in the situation would simply say, "Hi, traveler, how have you been?" <laughs> the traveler and I are like intertwined stars in the vast galaxy. You of all people should very well know the fate foretold by this meeting. Precisely. Lady Magistus, please refrain from such unimaginative utterances. Lady M... M... A what now? <laughs> Lady Magistus has long since become a citizen of the Imanakreish. She has been serving as court archmage under one's command for some time now. <clears throat> That's just my surname. Don't mind that. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> You're here because Fischl asked Catherine to ask you to come, right? Indeed so, my Archmage. Did even this appear in thy divination? Why, your powers are truly dangerous. Oh, for the love of... No, of course not. You told me yourself that you'd left a message with Catherine. <sighs> Excuse me. Anyway, in my case, she practically beat the door down to get me to come along. Whatever she says, please, don't be too astonished. Ah, uh, don't worry. We've been around the block. You can't phase us. Oh, faithful servants, one's homeland, the Imanachreich, which bears the darkest of all fates, draws near to this world once more. Stand with me in anticipation, for the glory of our kingdom is nigh. Uh... Wait, what? Indeed. Only one's most faithful envoys are fortunate enough to be privy to this great revelation. <clears throat> the Imanach Reich is near Mondstadt. No, please. That will be most unnecessary. I know. 
know it sounds absurd, but there's actually something behind this, I promise. Basically, what Fischl means is... Oh, Lady Magistus! Ugh, all right, all right. Honestly, look at me. A genius astrologist forced into a juvenile role-playing game. The truth is that yesterday, Her Highness encountered the Spark Knight Klee outside of the city. Both being of great fame, they recognized one another instantly and began to converse. It was already getting dark, so, in that spirit of great compassion and care for which she is known, Her Highness personally accompanied Klee back to Mondstadt. On the way, Her Highness relayed to Klee the story of her origins. Upon hearing the tragic tale of the fall of Her Highness's homeworld, the tender-hearted Spark Knight inquired, with tears welling up in her eyes. Oh no, is the Imanach Reich really gone? Won't it grow back? Oh mortal, your sovereign's heart is touched by thy sincerity and sympathy. But nay, the Imanach Reich is an everlasting realm, and one day, it shall make its reappearance. Really? So how do we make your homeland grow back again? Oh, please tell me. Please, please. Hmm. Since you inquire so earnestly, <clears throat> give unto me a tranquil haven. Promise me eternal admiration. Lend me both time and wind, and one shall revive one's homeworld. Could you cut the reenactment and just get to the point? In short, Klee gave Fischl an island to serve as the promised land where the Immernal Crash will appear. I didn't believe it either at first, but then I saw this letter. Providence has gifted Main Fräulein with an excellent opportunity. Esteemed traveler, as Main Fräulein's cherished retainer, you deserve to bear witness to this grand moment with us. This island looks kind of familiar. Traveler, curtail thy umming and awing at once. The throne of the Imanach Reich calls for me. Come, be my blade. Clear the way and witness what is to come. I... I think she just wants to invite you along to the island with her. <sighs> that being said, I have a feeling that I'll be better off not performing any divination where that island's concerned. Huh? Why not? Klee is involved in this, which means her mother is probably involved, which means that old hag is involved. <sighs> thanks, but no thanks. You, who have traveled to the farthest reaches of the world, fathom the celestial path of stardust in the palm of your hand, and witness raindrops converge and become one with the undercurrent of destiny. You, yes you... Must chart the course that leads the way to the land promised to main Fräulein by fate. Oh, Fischl doesn't know the way there! <laughs> um, since thou asketh it for our help, Paimon can telleth you that we are good friends with the Spark Knight Klee, the Guides of Destiny. Come on, just play along. Behold, the Watcher, the Guide, the Weaver of Dreams, the Traveler. <laughs> excellent, most excellent! To sum up, <laughs> Traveler, since you say you know the way, we'll let you take us to the island. I mean, the Promised Land. Oh, good, fine, done. Uh, right now, um, Lady Magistus needs to go home to pack her things and catch up on some sleep. Your Highness, your uh, other distinguished selves, let's meet at the city gate at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Very well, then it is settled. One blesses you with an undisturbed slumber, Lady Magistus. You too, Traveler. Main Fräulein means to say... Good night. See you all tomorrow. About darn time! Good night! Paimon 
is exhausted. You all have proper rules. How come Paimon has to be a clock on the wall in the royal palace? Cuckoo, it's 12 o'clock sharp in the Immernachtreich. <laughs> anyway, since those islands are a pretty mind-blowing place, why don't we get some people with mind-boggling ideas to help us out? Kaya's mind works in mysterious ways. But no one in Mondstadt has ideas that boggle the mind quite like a certain somebody who's definitely going to be in the tavern at this hour. Come on, let's go rope him into helping us. We're here, tongue deaf bard! Uh-huh. Uh... What are they doing in Mondstadt? Oh, look at that! <laughs> You're really here! Come on, take a seat and join our delightful conversation. Wow, Traveler Paimon! Speak of the devil, we were literally just talking about you. <laughs> Truly a curious coincidence. Kazuma, Shinyan, what are you doing here in a Mondstadt tavern? And how'd you end up having to share a table with the Tone Deaf Bard? Tone Deaf Bard? <laughs> Now that's a fun stage name. It seems like you're a pretty well-known singer, fella. Though well, sadly not a rock and roll singer, or we could perform a duet. So, you all know each other. My newfound friends are my old friends' friends from afar. <laughs> How fantastic. Oh, this is a rare opportunity indeed. Oh, we should form a poetry club and call it, uh, the Free Poet Society, or something like that. Yeah, I felt like getting out and finding some new inspiration for my songwriting. Kazaha felt like going on a trip too, so we figured we'd travel together. Last month, Beto held a big booze-filled party called the Drink Till You Sink Championship, and she put me in charge of the music. And that's where I met Kazaha. Although Shinyan can come across as unruly at times, her musical understanding is highly nuanced and original. Safe to say, our shared appreciation for music struck a chord in us both. Oh, you can say that again. In Kazaha's hands, even a leaf becomes an instrument. That makes him an expert among my friends. Starting from Liyue, we passed through Stone Gate and kept going till we came into Mondstadt. Then along the way, we saw this really awesome manor. It was something else. Oh, yeah! We know the one. Our friend owns that place. <laughs> really? Y'all sure have a lot of friends. Well, whoever it is that lives in that fine place must be really loving life, huh? Uh, yes so. <laughs> Similar souls tend to attract each other. Traveler and Paimon, you must have exceptional taste, just like that friend of yours. Wow, you're too nice! Unlike some people who only ever seem to poke fun at Paimon. Ahem. <clears throat> By the way, do you know anything about the Iridescence Tour? It's supposed to be huge. Rumor has it that all seven nations of Tevat are gonna be involved. Well, so far it's mostly just empty promises. Anyway, it's supposed to be a music festival. The organizer really did a number on me last time. They canceled on me. But I hear that they're still active. I'd love to give the festival another shot. But wouldn't you know it, the plans fell through again. How can they mess up this bad twice in a row? Music is all about inspiration. Maybe the organizers canceled the show because theirs dried up. But fear not, weary travelers, for your journey was not in vain. It has, after all, brought you here, to me, to the Temple of Music. Your Temple of Music must have more than just good tunes. You're a bard, ain't you? A song's gotta have a good story or it doesn't make the cut, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, you understand the meaning of being a bard so well. To express my gratitude, I will even share one of these stories with you. <laughs> oh, you're a funny fella. Are all bards like you? I've met many bards during my travels, but none of them are as entertaining as you. 
<laughs> I'm sure it all comes down to the richness of my imagination and, by extension, the poverty of theirs. And on that note, here is a fantastical tale that is sure to delight you all. <clears throat> Legends tell of an emerald isle in the middle of the ocean. There, the Dodo King and his people live a blissful existence. When a Dodoko is born, it dives into the water. Some learn to swim. Others are carried away by the waves, all the way to Mondstadt, where they befriend the children there. One Dodoko made a new friend in Mondstadt, the little Spark Knight. But the Dodo King did not approve. He demanded that the little knight come to the island and prove herself to him. So the little knight, together with her most important friend in the world, braved the wind and waves, finally reaching the middle of the ocean. But Dodo King was not there. Dodo King had lied. There was no trial, by fire or interrogation. The little knight's mother, who was a mage, had built an entire summer city there as a gift to her daughter, along with this message. Summer is the season of love. It is the time for freedom and fun. So everyone, please sing, dance, and enjoy yourselves here. The End How interesting. I now have the urge to visit that island myself. This is the thing about traveling. You can't plan ahead. Better to leave when the mood takes you and go where the heart leads. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Well, there's wine on the table and I have stories to tell. Seems like fate is feeling kind today. Here's to music. Come on, traveler. Don't worry, if you don't like wine, there's juice as well. In that case, I'll have a glass of juice. Hmm. This one. I like the color. Oh no! Kazuha! Uh-oh, this fella's drunk. But, uh, wasn't he drinking fruit juice? <laughs> more. More, 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 more. <laughs> more, more, please. <laughs> Oops, I think I accidentally placed some fruity cocktails out there. <laughs> My bad. <sighs> Seriously? Anyway, guess it's time to talk about business after all that drinking. You came here because you need my help, I presume? Oh yeah! That's a good point! We didn't come here to drink! Hmm, look where we are. Yup, I can sense that you're about to tell me something very interesting. Klee gave a special gift from her mother to an adventurer friend? <laughs> She's such a kind-hearted child. As I'm sure you've already guessed, that letter is most definitely written by Alice. Yeah, that's so. Speaking of, guess which two people I ran into on my way to the tavern today? Hmm, Master Jean or Lisa? A mother and daughter, both with long elf ears and the most amazingly adorable personalities. Alice and Clee? Ding, ding, ding! Correct answer! The unaging mage was taking her teeny tiny knight on a vacation, and I happened to run into them. As a friendly greeting, the mysterious woman gave me a gift. She also said that if I meet any fun friends, I should share this gift with them. So now it's yours to keep. Ah, it's a bomb! 
minus the fuse, so don't worry, it's not going to explode. Come on, take it! This way we can talk to each other just like this, even when we're apart. It's called a dodo communication device, and it allows people to stay in touch over vast distances. However, you can't just use it anytime you want, and there's also a limit on the number of times you can use it. That's why it's currently only available to a certain select few. I heard that the inspiration for this comes from another world. <laughs> Alice is always full of surprises. She and Klee asked me to tell you. <clears throat> Please take this with you when you depart for the island. No, wait. The promised land with your friends. And have fun. Don't worry about how to get there. The organizers of this vacation have made arrangements. Turn right after you exit the city gates and you'll see something that will make you very happy. Sounds like the two of you are in cahoots over this. <laughs> of course not. Is that really the sort of person you think I am? Traveler, you're my friend. And as your friend, I just want to give you something that'll make you happy. How can you think this of me? Ah, fair enough. The Toad Deaf Guard does like to joke around, but he's still one of our best friends. Besides, a vacation sounds great. <laughs> Actually, Kazuo and Shinyan seemed pretty interested in coming on this trip too. Let's ask them if they want to join us. Ah, you're back. Poor Kazuha's still out for the count. Seems like he can't handle alcohol so well. Shinyan, do you want to come to the islands with us? Adventure. Can't. Huh? He doesn't want to go anymore. He seemed really interested just a moment ago. Can't miss. The adventure. Ah, oh. <laughs> Kazuha might act mature, but deep down he's just another youngster eager for new experiences. That must be why he didn't think anything of the fruit juice earlier. Well, all the more reason for you to join the island trip. You know, a lot of people have praised the beautiful scenery there, even bards. Okay, sounds like a plan. How do we get there? Someone's got it covered, apparently. There'll be a few others joining us on this trip, and we're meeting at the city gate tomorrow morning. We'll wait for you. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Traveler? Oh, yeah. They don't know official yet, do they? Okay, so here's the deal. There's a princess from a faraway land and her retinue who are also coming on this trip. Huh? Uh, Paimon, don't get me wrong, I'm just asking to make sure, but from the way you're plugging this trip so hard, uh, did the Iridescence Tour folks put you up to this? After all, canceling the Iridescence Tour after people already made the trip, that's kind of the same thing as tricking people into going traveling, ain't it? Ugh, why won't anyone believe Paimon? <laughs> Don't worry about that for now. You'll all have the chance to get acquainted with each other tomorrow morning. Whether you're a princess, a retainer, a talking raven, a samurai, or a musician, you're all VIP guests of the island on your summer vacation. And that's what counts, right? <sighs> I'm sure looking forward to it. Uh, I'll have to pass. I have some work to take care of. You serious? The Toad Deaf Bard actually has plans to do some work? I promised a young lady with cat ears and a cat tail that I'd sing at her tavern to boost business and beat the competition. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> the competition being this place, which has six-fingered Jose. Aren't you allergic to cats? Yup, <laughs> I can always sing on their roof. She told me that as long as their sales surpass their competitor, there's a whole month's worth of wine in it for me. <laughs> oh, what a fine employment opportunity, virtually tailor-made for me. So have fun, <laughs> and don't worry about me. <laughs> I feel like this summer is going to be a very interesting one. 
Today is the day of one's reckoning with fate, as foretold by the night sky. Humiliation suffered in the past, the shame we have carried all these years. One bids you adieu, for today it is time for... Retribution! Mein Fräulein, if I may be so bold, that final phrase did not sound like one of your own. Of course it wasn't. I just overheard it from someone in the city. Uh, I mean, thy princessin is merely drawing on the wisest and courageous sayings she has heard in the land to signify the importance of this day. Hmm, let me see. Huh, it really is someone else's catchphrase. Wow, you're here early. Hi. Who have you brought with you? Oh, ahem. Allow Paimon to introduce to you a fabled wandering swordsman of Inazuma and an enchanting musical talent of Liyue. Hey, I'm Shinyan from Liyue. I like rock and roll, sunny days, and good times. You must be the princess Paimon told us about. You sure do look the part. Uh, I hear you're from a faraway land. It's an honor to be in the company of dignitaries. And this lady over here. My family tells me that only the wisest scholars wear pointed hats like this one. Uh, guessing that applies to you too? Oh, oh I like her. She can stay. Shen Yan, your gaze pierces the dark veil of night to arrive at the truth beyond. I am in need of one such as yourself. Very well. You shall be one's musician laureate. She's trying to say thanks. You say all the right things. Um, and the same goes for me too. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Mona, an astrologist. No, oh, well, it's nice to meet you too. Mona is amazing. She can find out everything about you by divination. A princess, an astrologist, and an articulate raven retainer. In the company of giants, my humble self hardly deserves mention. I am Kaidahara Kazuha from Inazuma. It is an honor to meet you all. What ho, Kazuha? Divulge thy epithets and thy vocation. Oh, main Fräulein would like to know where you work and what your field of expertise is. Um... I'm afraid I'm just another wanderer. This guy is an expert in the sword arts. He parries blades that none have ever parried before, and strikes like lightning. Mere mortals could not hope to comprehend. What? Is he really that powerful? Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh? Oh. Oh my. Hi, Kazuha. I'm absolutely delighted to meet a great swordmaster like you. Could we ask you to be our guard while we're on the island? One hereby declares you, Captain of the Royal Guard of the Imanakreish. For even Lady Magistus to praise your skills, you are surely one of rare talent. Okay, Lady M Mag... Lady Magic... What? Oh, just call me Mona. Stop calling me that weird name. By the way, Lady Magistus, we found out how to get to the Promised Land. A legendary great mage gave us a big hint. Come on, everyone. Follow Paimon. Look, everyone. Here's our vehicle. Somehow, I suddenly don't feel like going anymore. What a, uh, unique little thing. Looks kind of like Guoba, doesn't it? Guoba. Is he the magical creature at Wan Min Restaurant? Now that you mention it, it does look quite similar. Uh, to be honest, 
Even Paimon isn't so sure this can take us to the island after all. Hmm... I see, I see. Only by meeting the lowliest of ends can we arrive at the Imanakreish born anew. Ho <laughs> ho! Behold! The doorway cloven by thundering retribution! By such means as I once descended into this realm to bring retribution, do I now venture into the next. Come, Oz! Lead the way! I will enter first. Main Fräulein need not worry. He's in! And now he's gone! Why, this truly is the path of retribution that leads to the Promised Land. Uh, maybe I should just do a quick reading for safety. Lady Magistus, it's fine! This is Alice's creation. It's totally safe. Spare yourself the trouble. Just come with us. All right, I completely forgot. <sighs> All right. Try and stay. Ow! Fischl, you're treading on my hair! I thought it was a snake! Ah, we're flying! Everyone, be careful. <laughs> we finally landed! What was that all about? What a beautiful place. The wind is soft and the ocean is calm. And a pleasant scent blows on the breeze. of life, and a land filled with flora. Main Fräulein, we have finally arrived at the Promised Land, whence we shall revive the Imanakreish. Oh, faithful retainers, this is the blessed paradise that one has been searching for. Here is where we shall witness the culmination of all things. I, who command the darkness, shall lead you to yonder gate of dreams. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Shall lead you to yonder gate of dreams. <sighs> your Archmage Magistus thanks you for your kindness, Your Highness. In this moment, I offer my blessings to the Emmernachreich. Mona, what are you? Uh... Oh, don't ask. Just follow my lead. Oh, oh, right. <clears throat> Praise be to the Princessin, who has led us here to this sacred place. My sincere gratitude to you for inviting me to join you on this trip, Your Highness. Your happiness gladdens one's heart. <sighs> How it delights me to bring us all together here at this most monumentally fateful of moments. Now, as I take my first step on this pilgrimage, I shall perceive this ocean of life with my own earthly vessel. After all, this is where my soul belongs. On the contrary, Lady Magistus, blessed as you are with the great power of Hydro, one yet finds too many impurities in thy soul. Mm -mm -mm. Main Fräulein means Lady Magistus is perhaps not the most talented swimmer. Oh, Fischl, that's enough. I'm happy enough to join in with the play acting without complaining, but how dare you ridicule my genius? Think you can swim better than me? Ha! I'll bring you to your knees, young lady. Oh my, main Fräulein. 
Steal yourself, main fräulein. Oh yeah! Swimming race, swimming race! Whoever comes in last is a rotten egg! Challenge accepted! Heed my words, lowly Lady Magistus! You shall pay for your foolishness for as long as you live! Ridiculous! I've never lost a single swimming race in my life! Bring it on! First one to run to the beach wins! Are they serious? Running? I thought they were gonna swim! I take it you have no present plans. I want to start by surveying the area first. Want to come along? Xinyan, are you coming? Seems like everyone's got things to do. I'll stay here and hold down the fort for now. Mona and Fish will have gone swimming and someone's got to set up camp. Don't worry, I got this. You're gonna take a look around, right? Well, make sure you let me know if there are any good views. Hey, what's that huge weird thing over there? It appears to be some sort of machine. And an army cap with traces of hydro next to it. It seems that we are not the first to set foot on this island. Also, there are footprints here. Fresh ones. Likely no more than a few days old. Really? Hyman didn't notice them at all! Hmm? <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, stay alert. Did you see something? Someone was here. And they're still nearby. Judging from the scent, they're visitors here like us. There's other people here? Oh, Paimon's scared now. Come on, we need to track them down. You said the cab had traces of hydro on it? Then let's follow the traces of elemental energy. This pointy thing looks like a tower. Pretty unique, too. Uh, maybe it has something to do with that machine we saw. But, uh, from the looks of it, it seems pretty broken. Oh, close. Watch out. It's the Fatui! You're mine! Yeah. Yeah. Why are there Fatui on this island? <sighs> Isn't there a single place in this world without mint, sweet flowers, and Fatui? Interesting observation. <laughs> Cappy Cap's gone. Where's Cappy Cap? Are you looking for something? A cap? I, I, can't, I can't lose it. I don't know anything! Give me back Cappy Cap! <laughs> Is this the cap you're looking for? <laughs> My brother's Cappy Cap! Gimme, gimme, gimme! Ah, uh, this guy is not the sharpest sword in the sheath. Mm, don't bully me or I'll punch you in the... Ah! Monster! Monster! <laughs> Stop right there! What are you doing here? Another Fatus? We can ask you the same question! What are you doing here? Hmm? <laughs> Protect Cappy Cap or brother will get mad at me! Forget the Cap! It's your brother we're looking for! What happened to him? Nothing! He has a fever! He's just a little delirious, that's all. I don't have to tell you anything. Go bother someone else. This island belongs to our friend. You better watch what you say, mister. What? 
I thought this island was uninhabited. That's why we came here to... <clears throat> Never mind. <sighs> Fine. I'll tell you, but then you need to leave me alone. It's a new kind of energy generator that I invented. We were simply looking for a deserted island to test it out on. There. Satisfied? Yeah! And if you don't do as you're told, we'll... Uh... Oh! We'll take his cap! Oh, please don't! <laughs> hey! Stop crying! Alright, I promise we'll stay within this area. Okay? Uh... By the way, um... Why is there smoke coming out of your machine? <sighs> because the cursed thing is broken. As much as I hate to say it, our tests did not go to plan. We were getting ready to leave anyway. Oh, well just see yourselves out whenever you're ready. Bye! Come on, let's go. <laughs> okay. Paimon can't believe we have to deal with the Fatui during our vacation! Why would the Fatui appear in such an isolated corner of the world? Whatever their reasons, it's likely more complicated than we might think. Even though we're on vacation, we should stay vigilant. Also, in the interests of keeping the ladies in good spirits, I have a suggestion. Let's keep this between us for now. Let them enjoy their vacation while the Traveler and I deal with any potential threats. What do you think? You're so considerate, Kazuha. Paimon, you flatter me. I simply don't think it's worth ruining anyone's vacation over a trivial matter like this. The scenery is beautiful. I hope all of us can enjoy ourselves here. We're back! Just in time. So, Traveler, Paimon, who do you think the real swimming champion is? Me or Fischl? <laughs> Utter my supreme name and see how Lady Magistus, the presumptuous, is reduced to bitter tears. Oh, no you don't! Don't put this on Paimon! Oh, wise Paimon, surely you can discern who the true winner is. Lady Paimon, the time to show your loyalty is nigh. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't Paimon get some food in her first? Poor thing looks starving after such a long trek out. Oh, thank you, Xinyan. Yes, we did walk quite a long way. Right? While you were off doing your own things, I caught us some seafood and picked us a few fruits. They taste real good barbecued. Now that you mention it, I'm getting a little peckish myself. <sighs> I, too. Well, there's plenty to go around, so dig in! I can't say I've got the culinary skills of my chef friend, but I promise you'll at least eat your fill. Mm, time to eat! Inviting Lady Shinyan here was an astute decision indeed. Paimon's done talking! You guys carry on if you want to go hungry! I love that barbecue smell. Mm. This tastes amazing. Mm. Impressive. Since Shinyan made dinner for us, allow me to take charge of breakfast tomorrow. I want too. Oh, oh, traveler, you forgot about something. Uh, let's talk over there. with the Fatui is bothering you too, right? Well, remember the bomb thing that Venti gave us? We can contact him using that! Wait, no, not a bomb. Venti said it's called a Dodo Communication Device. Yeah, let's ask Venti if he knows anything. He always seems clued in on everything, so if there's any intel floating around, he'll definitely know about it. Thank <laughs> you.
person who can contact me on this thing. How come you're sneezing? I'm at the cat's tail. Oh, so many cats. They, they, they gave me some allergy medicine, but it's not working. Okay, go on then. What are you calling about? Could you be any lazier? Alright, well... Fenty, there's some strange things going on on this island. We ran into the Fatui! Uh, the Fatui? Yeah, they're everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> uh, the Cryo Archon's minions are a capable crew. I'd be more surprised if they hadn't shown up yet. But they're ruining our vacation! Really? But, uh, <clears throat> you sound fine. They can't have caused you too much trouble, surely. Or, uh, if, if they did, I'm sure you have everything under control by now. Yeah, but something just doesn't feel right. That's why we came to you. Don't you have any information for us? Mm, I haven't heard anything new about the Fatui. Uh, but uh, don't worry. I may be a lowly tone-deaf bard, but you may contact me whenever you need me. I mean, I can't promise I'll be of much help, but uh, at least you'll have someone to talk to, <laughs> right? Uh, sometimes just talking things through is enough to calm a worried mind. Ugh, honestly. Adventuring is what you do best. It's only natural to encounter a few surprises when you head somewhere new, but just remember, not all unexpected encounters are dangerous. The same wind graces the seaside as that which wafts over pastures green. Whenever you see clouds, it was the wind that carried them there. Don't worry, my friends. The wind will always be with you. Okay, then. I have to go now. My performance in the cat's tail is starting any second. Okay, bye. So... He means we don't need to worry too much about the Fatui, right? Well, if that's what the Tone Deaf Bard says, then fingers crossed we'll have a peaceful and relaxing vacation where nothing weird happens at all. When you go off on a long trip with your friends, the important thing is to have fun! Wake up! Traveler, wake up! Oh, thank goodness you're awake. Uh, Paimon has good news and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Ah, okay, okay, Paimon, sorry. Wake up, something's happened. Okay, uh, bad news first. The bad news is something weird's going on with this island. And the good news is... Uh, is... It seems like it has nothing to do with what we came across yesterday. Today is a different issue entirely. Ah, look! She's awake! Careful not to frighten her. She's probably just like the others. Ah, humans. Such delicate little things. How are you doing, mate? Feeling a little fragile? So, as you can see, the boat can talk. <laughs> No! Avoidance isn't gonna solve anything! Poor soul. Imagine being scared of talking squirrels and boats. Ha! <laughs> well, we can't blame her. After all, humans aren't quite accustomed to hearing things like us talk. Wait, have you guys always been able to talk? <laughs> of course! Otherwise, how would we communicate with others of our kind? So, in other words, we suddenly gained the ability to understand you? Huh. How strange. Maybe you've gained some intelligence. Congratulations. So you're finally awake. Time to rise and shine. Oh, you're back. Yes, we went for a little walk. The enchanting scenery and pleasant weather here soothes the body and mind. 
Everything is fine, except that some places are a little peculiar. Oh, <laughs> the servants of darkness have descended. Rejoice, for the return of the Emanach Reich is nigh. Main Fräulein means that this is an unexpected development, and she has never seen anything like this before. No, that's not even close to what she said. Oh, my apologies. Please take that as my own opinion. After last night, there have been some... unusual spectacles on this island. Yes. Swimming birds, flying squirrels, the sun and moon in the sky together. Some of these sights only lasted for a moment, but that doesn't make it any less bizarre. I heard a strange flapping sound on the island, but didn't see a single flying creature around. There was also a peculiar floral scent on the wind. Though there are many flowers on this island, that scent did not resemble any of them. Seems to me like whatever these things are, they aren't visible to the naked eye. I tried to perform a divination, but my scryglass showed only a chaotic mess that was impossible to decipher. Ooh, Paimon has a bad feeling about this. Oh, what have we gotten ourselves into? Hmm... I had resolved to summon the Imanakreish in this land, but now we observe these puzzling phenomena. Could this be the spawn of the Condemned, trying to thwart my sacred endeavor? Wait, you don't think Alice could be behind all this, do you? But if it really was her, it wouldn't make sense to do all this. <laughs> ah, look at them, old chap. Seems we scared the pants off them. Aye, well, they've never seen anything like this before. This old boat sailed all over the briny seas in its time, and tried talking to many a sailor, too. But in all that time, not a single person has ever spoken back. Exactly! If it weren't for this environment, who would have thought humans would be able to chat with us? This environment? What do you mean by that? Oh, the environment? Could it be that... That the environment is what's interfering with my divinations. Ah, uh, even if you were. Dreams aren't supposed to become reality, right? And a dream won't make you suddenly understand boats and squirrels. Uh, ah! What's wrong? Look! Illusion? No, it felt too real to be an illusion. Those things we saw flickering in and out, that's exactly what I saw earlier this morning. <gasps> Does this mean the Amanagrash is real? Wait, what? Ahem! <clears throat> oh, behold! The Amanagrash has come! Just as your princessin had prophesied. Come, my people, a new chapter awaits us. Indeed, main Fräulein. We all have witnessed this miracle with our own eyes. And now is the time to celebrate the creation of a new world. Rejoice. <laughs> Welcome to the Yamanakrush. She looks so happy. Paimon doesn't have the heart to interrupt her right now. Oh, she doesn't seem surprised in the slightest. Does that just come with being an experienced adventurer, or...? If this isn't an illusion, we ought to go and investigate. I got an idea. 
If you hurt yourself in a dream, you wake up right away, don't you? Um, hmm. Yes, you have a point. Right? So come on, Kazaha, hit me. Uh, I'd rather not. Uh, how about you hit me instead? But that'll hurt real bad. Hey, there'll be no need for any of that. Just leave it to us. Um, hey, Traveler, can Paimon hit you? <laughs> I like your senses of humor, me hearties. An illusion. So, talking boats and squirrels are just an illusion to humans, huh? Now, now, it's understandable, old chap. Haven't you heard? As humans grow older, they forget many important things and lose many of their abilities. Aye, so they do. A pity, to be sure. Thinking back, in all those years I spent sailing with the fleet, I would have never imagined that one day I'd be laughing over something like this. Well then, me lads and lasses, don't you want to take a wee gander at all the places you're so curious about? Of course, but how do we get there? Look, here. At what? Blimey, at me, of course. Oh, that's right. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm the smartest chip you'll find in all of these parts. The names... Uh... Just call me whatever takes your fancy. Don't you have a name? That I do. I... just can't remember it. All I know is that I came here from Inazuma. In that case, Paimon shall name you... Mitaburu! How's that? All the other ships in Inazuma seem to have names ending in Ru, too. Mitaburu! Ha! That'll do nicely. You're lucky to have met me. I can sail through the choppiest seas with ease. There isn't a wave out there that can capsize me. So, come aboard, and I'll take you wherever you'd like to go. Ah, how very kind of you, old chap. Unlike that animal archon who abandoned us here. You know, the animal archon of Mondstadt. Don't you know, some of these islands used to be Mondstadt's mountaintops. Once upon a time, the animal archon sliced them off to neaten the place up and chuck them into the ocean. My great, 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 uh, great grandfather was on one of the mountaintops and got sent flying here along with it. Wretched animal archon. How could that happen? And we've been living here for generations since then. <laughs> Fortunately, there were a few other squirrel families that got stranded on these islands as well. So we built ourselves a kingdom here. The good thing is that there are no predators or competitors around. All the pine cones on this island are ours for the taking. The bad thing is, we're stuck here. Didn't see that coming. Sounds like the Imranath Reich is a kingdom of squirrels! <gasps> Hold thy tongue! Paimon, please do not make such slanderous statements. The Imranath Reich is, of course, a kingdom of night ravens. Hey, lad. Yes, you. You're from Inazuma, aye? That makes us brothers, ha! <laughs> Every young lad of Inazuma has to pluck up the courage to set sail on an adventure one day. So, are you coming? <laughs> to set sail is to leave one's homeland and travel far away. Aye, you need lots of courage and just a dash of heartlessness. Cause once you leave, you may never return. But if you stay, you're forever a prisoner in your own heart. <laughs> Inspiring words, Mitoboru. And you're right. The Wanderer's spirit runs in my blood. I'll go with you. My friends, are you coming too? I want to take a look at the strange phenomena on that island. Also, I smell ancient timber and waterproof varnish on this boat. The scent is indeed from Inazuma, so I believe he speaks the truth. Huh. 
what does everyone think? Oz, lay down the gangplank. Thy princessin shall take to the seas. Let's all go. It'll definitely be an experience. Ha! Great! And we're off! Safe travels! One with nature! Good going, lads and lassies. Mitoboru admires your bravery. How long have you been here? Oh, it's not your first time. Ha! Well, I never. <laughs> well, I certainly didn't expect to see you here. This is a bonsai pot, right? It's nice, but it looks like it's been a little neglected. This bonsai was in my family for many generations. I saw it once in a Tenryo Commission warehouse, but it looked quite different from how it does now. At that time, there was a withered tree inside. Why would someone keep the plant in there if it's dead? It's a way of sending a secret message. It indicated that there was something hidden inside the flower pot. There was a letter buried down at the bottom, which told of an ancient secret in my clan. I did not take the bonsai with me after reading the letter, which means it should still be in the warehouse now. I wonder who removed the plant and placed the pot here. So the bonsai pot belonged to your ancestors? Seems a shame to leave it empty like this. Hmm. Huh. Kaza, what do you think about maybe putting a little something inside it? <laughs> All right. Though I still don't understand why it has appeared here, I can give that a try. Paimon <laughs> knew it wasn't gonna be that simple! Huh? Oh, yeah! Everyone's here, except for Kazuha! Kazuha! Where are you? Are you okay? No response. Well, let's keep an eye out for him. Look at the decor here. It's like the inside of a grand mansion. I don't think this is a perilous maze. It's somebody's home. Most curious. What secrets lie within this place I shall surely uncover. Let's take a closer look. It looks like this letter was written by Kazuha's father. So keeping bonsai plants really does run in the family. Hmm. But the fact that we're even here and could see his father's notes, it just seems so unbelievable. Looks like a letter Kazaha wrote while he was traveling. Oh, what a sad letter. <laughs> Lord Kazuha. Oh. The flesh resides in society while the heart yearns for the natural world. Such has been the way of the Kaidaharas for many generations. Kazuha, the future of this clan will one day be in your hands. When that time comes, remember to always stay true to yourself. I heard an old man say something about the Kaidaharas. Sounds like it might be Kazuha's grandfather. Listen carefully, Kazuha. A Kaidahara blade is not forged for the purpose of harming people. Father, what are you carving? <laughs> it's a rock garden. I'm modeling it after the scenery I saw on my travels abroad. It'll go with my bonsai later. 
Work has been so busy these years, I've barely had a moment to spend with my grandson. I hope he doesn't take after me. When he's older, he should get out there and see more of the world. I believe the other voice belongs to Lord Kazuha's father. Oh, I see. We have ventured into Lord Kazuha's memory. Oh, there you are! Huh? Where did you all go? This place is a maze! We all got trapped inside except for you! I've been stuck in this room the whole time and can't seem to find a way out. I have to say, this place looks a lot like my childhood bedroom. If this is your home, why would you be trapped here? Is the maze trying to keep you out? <sighs> it appears that this whole maze is modeled after my family home. And all the conversations you heard in there are in fact words once spoken by my father and grandfather. You said that the maze is trying to keep me out. Indeed. I'm the only one unable to explore this place. I think these unusual structures are some kind of mirage. According to what Kazuha said, all this seems to be constructed based on Kazuha's memory. Hmm. But why should Lord Kazuha be the only one excluded? Maybe that comes from me too. To me, what is past is gone. Everything in the world is guided by its own rules, and as for people, we can never relive the past. I think that this belief is the reason why the Mirage was keeping me out. Oh, I can get behind that. It's a very sensible way of looking at things. All our thoughts have consequences. I don't consider it strange, and I don't think it's anything you should be worried about. Hmm. <laughs> We got in here by touching the bonsai, didn't we? So perhaps, if we touch it again... We're back! Hey, look! That whole mountain's changed completely! Wait... Everyone... I might have an explanation. The changes in the mirage could be related to the bonsai. My father once mentioned that this pot was originally part of a collection belonging to my great-grandfather. He adored his bonsai and always took great care of them. When our family fell upon hard times, my grandfather traveled far and wide looking for a way to save the clan. However, during that time, my great-grandfather became gravely ill. He knew my grandfather had no interest in bonsai, so before his death, he gave most of his carefully crafted bonsai away. This is the only one he retained. To hide the letter with that secret in it, right? Yes, and to give his son something to remember him by. My grandfather returned quickly as he could, but my great-grandfather had already passed away. They never got the chance to say goodbye to each other before the end. After that, my grandfather would spend long periods of time standing in front of this bonsai, lost in thought. Eventually, he started to make his own bonsai. Unlike his father, he preferred arranging rock gardens instead of plants. Perhaps influenced by my grandfather, my father also took a liking to crafting bonsai. Back then, our courtyard was filled with all kinds of them. And this flower pot was passed down to me as a family treasure. It's certainly no coincidence that it appeared here and became the entrance to the mirage. It's almost as if... It's giving me a chance to make up for past regrets. There was once a time when the Kaidaharas were an illustrious clan in Inazuma. After the Raiden Gokaden incident, our clan's fortunes took a turn for the worse. By the time of my generation, our downfall was complete. 
Later, I fled Inazuma, as I didn't want to be arrested. With no one left in the Kaidahara clan, the authorities confiscated everything in our home, including this bonsai. Like my ancestors before me, I think I'd like to try it out for myself. Recreate a favorite scene from my travels, and place it into this pot. Oh. Since the contents of this bonsai affect the mirage, I'd at least like to try my hand at making something. But what style? Should I use plants for the bonsai, like my great-grandfather? Or rocks, like my father and grandfather? <laughs> Perhaps a rock garden would suit me better. So do you need any supplies to make this bonsai? I think I'll need a set of tools and some rocks that can be carved and made into decorations. Got it. We'll help you look. We might just get lucky. If the pot's here, then surely other stuff related to crafting bonsai can't be far away. I concur. Lord Kazuha, take heart in your search, for my retinue and I shall help you retrieve your missing treasures. Thank you, everyone. This will do. Ah, Kazuha. You've come just at the right moment. What do you think of this rock carving? It's very intricate. I based it on a mountain scene I saw in a book. You know, there are nations in this world where the mountains reach all the way up into the clouds. <sighs> if only I had the chance to see them with my own eyes. Father, you can go anywhere whenever you want. That's not true. Though the Kaedehara clan is far from what it used to be, I still bear all the same responsibilities as the clan heads before me. But then again, continuing in the way of our forefathers, sacrificing everything for our declining clan, is it really worth it? But I... I don't understand. Kazuha, there's one thing I want you to always remember. Family ties are important, but you ought to not let them hold you back. Family only exists because of the people in it. If we are unhappy, how can we hope to build a joyful one? The events of the past have had a profound impact on our family, but they are not your burden to carry. If you ever grow tired of this tedious life, just drop everything and go off on a journey. See the world. Remember, Kazuha, don't let yourself get tied down in life. Yes, Father. I'm sorry, but I just don't understand. Kazuha, have you forgotten our promise? Do you really want to give it all up? But... But even if we're having a rough time, you still have me by your side. Can't I be of any help? When you were my age, you were already helping Grandfather out. Am I so incompetent that I'm a disappointment to you? Or... Kazuha! Now you're blaming yourself for all of this? That's why I failed you as a father. The Kaidehara clan has been paying the price for our past mistakes ever since your great-grandfather's generation. To this day, we have never fully recovered from it. Though we are a family of bladesmiths, you don't have to devote your life to the family craft. If a wounded animal wants to escape from a trap, it has to sacrifice the hind leg that was caught. You might think of this as a loss, but staying in the trap has far more deadly consequences. Enough now, Kazuha. As the head of the family, I failed to revitalize our clan. You never blamed me for not giving you the life promised to you by our heritage, and I'm grateful enough for that. All these generations of suffering... Let's end them today. From now on, live your life with no burdens. Don't worry. I'll carry the blame for abandoning our family business. Father... Please don't. You should not be to blame for not upholding our family name. Even if that day comes, let me share the burden with you. Let's just wait and see. Sooner or later, I will have to lead the Kaidahara clan. When the time comes, 
I'll deal with all our problems. Hey, think you're tough enough to go against me? Ah, no response! What's wrong? You scared? Did you really think it would be wise to pick a fight with the Kaidahara clan? Everybody stand back! The wind knows me. Get the fairy! Finally, I... The Kaidahara clan is no longer what it used to be. This isn't the Kazuha who came here with us. Maybe if I were more adept in the sword arts, I'd be able to share my father's burdens. This won't do. I'm getting distracted by family matters and making too many mistakes. I yearn to hear the song of Nightingale. My patient ears ready to attend. A veil of mist obscures the western skies. Into its midst, a silver moon descends. To no one is fighting a losing battle, and yet never once falter. This shall be my father's legacy. Thought we might find you trapped here again. <laughs> Yeah, it seems those are the rules. We entered that maze in the Mirage again, but the scene was different this time. The mood was more deflated, and the place more humbly furnished. Yes, that makes sense. What you saw was the Kaidahara clan in decline. We saw you in the Mirage, too, but you looked a little different than now. Indeed, I most certainly agree. Compared to the Lord Kazuha before us now, the Mirage we saw appeared lost, with the burden of fate weighing heavily upon him. I can confirm that. His fate was a heavy burden indeed. That means I am older and wiser now. I'm sorry you had to see my less mature former self. For a long time after leaving Inazuma, I've lived the life of a drifter. But this is no bad thing, because I learned much from the experience. I wish that I could have met my past self, too. If he saw me, I know that he would understand. Life is a long journey. And that's why I must travel far and wide. Just as I thought, the bonsai is the key to entering the mirage. Come on, let's continue looking for the rock garden. What's happened here? Everything is broken. Alas, the loftier the clan, the more devastating the fall. Broken into pieces and not a single soul around. This must be the way things ended. Come on, let's get moving. The Kaidahara clan has ultimately disbanded in my hands. But as my father said, I should not let life imprison me. Perhaps living the wanderer's life is what was meant for me after all. You know, they say that visions represent the Archon's gaze. Hmm... But is being under an Archon's gaze really a blessing? I don't know. Maybe? I have traveled far and wide in Inazuma since leaving home, and seen many new things along the way. Though material luxuries have... Vision hunt decree! Hand over your visions now! This way! Hurry! I 
know very well why people resist against the Vision Hunt decree. Ambition is our power in its rawest form. We cannot live without it. When no other option remains, I will leave. The Almighty Shogun is holding a duel before the throne. Unauthorized personnel are strictly forbidden from coming near. Wait, the kid has a vision? Get him! Don't let him get away! I need to train hard. The life of a wanderer is full of hardships. I have asked myself these questions many times. Should I go? If so, where to? And by what means? Kaidahara, that's you, right? Get on board, I'll get you out. But why are you helping me? I'm a wanted fugitive. Obviously the Yashiroka... <clears throat> An anonymous financial sponsor wants you to get out safely. But there's only so much they can do. After this, you'll be on your own. My grandfather once traveled to Liyue, while my father read about Mondstadt. But where is the right place for me? The sky's getting dark. It looks like it's going to rain. Will the rain ever stop? I'm warning you, do not attempt to resist! <laughs> oh, really? As long as uh, wind in the cloud! This is gonna hurt! Uh, 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 hey, buddy. You okay? Need a ride or something? <laughs> Pirates? <laughs> you could call us that. So, you coming or not? And look, Kazuha's over there. Kazuha! We found you! Ah, good timing. I was just reflecting on my life so far, and I think I'm all up to date. So, what do you think of the Kaidahara clan's bonsai? Old things often carry around some form of regret. The Kaidahara clan is no exception. But that's okay. Partings produce reunions. If not at home, then in a distant land. Oh, this mirage is quite fascinating. It presents life like a stage play, with each scene more captivating than the last. They say that astrologists have seen it all. So if this mirage intrigued you, that says it was a worthwhile encounter. <clears throat> How fares thy mood? Main Fräulein inquires as to your present well-being, Lord Kazuha, hoping your heart is not too filled with sorrow. There's no way anyone could be cheerful after reliving all that! <laughs> you have a point. Thank you all for your concern. Fortunately, all those things are past and gone now. When I first saw this bonsai, I thought of the possibility that I needed to wait for you. Perhaps that was why I had to be here on my own. There was supposed to be a dead plant in that flower pot. However, there was nothing there. While we were separated, I had a lot of time to reflect. I think I finally understand now. The mirage is me. The empty flower pot represents the state of my heart. When the heart is clear, the world is too. And when the heart is unladen, the same is true. Clear and unladen. That describes how I feel right now. Although I would not say there are no regrets in this. 
To be unladen is also to be empty. That's why this bonsai appeared as part of my mirage. It gave me a chance to fulfill my wishes. I never realized that deep down in my heart, I also wanted to make my own bonsai. Perhaps this is what it really means to keep Kaidahara traditions alive. Have you finished doing what you wanted to do, Kazuha? Yes, you could say that. You saw my past self and said goodbye to him. Only when you witness my whole story does it become truly consigned to history. What really matters in life is not how strict we are with ourselves, but the connections we make along the way. There's no future for those who linger on the past. So please believe me when I say that I've already come a long way. And I intend to go further still. I will always treasure your support. I often travel during storms, which means my eyes are often blinded by the rain. Many times, I couldn't even see what was right in front of me. One day, I finally reached the top of the mountain. I looked out with the clouds beneath my feet and only the gentle breeze murmuring in my ears. The highest mountain is a clear and enlightened heart. Here, there is no self, no hatred, no regrets, and no desires. Let's embark on a journey, for I am the breeze. We will meet again, no matter how far along the road. Life has just begun, and maybe the whole world can be my home. Must be exhausted. Let's call it a day. <sighs> What's wrong? You don't look too good. Nothing. Perhaps today's arduous journey is making me feel slightly out of sorts. Hmm. <laughs> Main Fräulein, are you all right? Oz, curb thy curiosity. Uh, yes, Main Fräulein. See if I can find something for us to eat. Go ahead and rest if you're feeling tired. But anyone who's up to it is welcome to help out. I'll help. Oh, me too. Everyone's volunteering to help. Maybe we should too. Whoa, hey! <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm, but, uh... Her highness looks kinda gloomy. Mona, you two seem close. Why don't you keep her company for a while? You noticed it too. I was going to bring it up with you while we were preparing the food. In that case, yes, just leave it to me. Alright, we'll prepare the food. Yep, this should be enough. We can grill these. Next time we pass by one of those abandoned campsites, I'll see if they have a cooking pot. We'd have some more variety then. Wow, that's such a nice idea! You might not be a chef, Shinyan, but you sure do know how to keep the diners happy! Oh, shucks, Paimon. It's no big deal. Just doing what I can. Even the crewmates of the Alcor consider Shinyan someone they can rely on. We feel the same way about you too, Kazuha. <laughs> we sure do. Hmm. Well, then, as a trusted friend, I have something I'd like to talk about. From what you've been saying, that miraculous mirage seems to have been based on my life story to date. It felt just like a dream to me. In other words, you've always wanted to make your own bonsai? Could that be it? All that was a means of granting me something I wished for? And since this happened to me, does that mean it could happen to everyone else, too? 
I agree. But I wonder whose mirage we'll encounter next. <laughs> I'm actually kind of looking forward to my own mirage if it's a dream come true like you say. Wait, you actually want something like this to happen with you too? Oh heck, any mirage to do with me would probably be music related. <laughs> It'd be a good chance to showcase a few tunes. You mean you'd want to do a performance in there? Why not? I don't think any self-respecting musician could stay silent on these islands. Just look at this place. So much confidence and optimism! Shenyan rocks! Oh, um, uh, Traveler! Paimon wants to try some of the fruit growing on that cliff over there! <laughs> Let's go pick some! So, those strange houses today, huh? And, uh, a mirage bonsai? Oh, basically lots of weird stuff today. Um, do you think we should tell Venti about it? There's no answer. That's weird. Why is he ignoring us? Maybe he got distracted. <gasps> or he forgot to bring the bomb to his performance. <gasps> or he got drunk and fell asleep under that huge tree. Hmm. Maybe we should try contacting him tomorrow. Traveler, Paimon. So here you are. Mona! <laughs> are you all done chatting with Fischl? Uh, close enough. She was a little downcast. I think it has something to do with the mirage we saw today. Fischl has been very excited about this trip from the start, but I have a feeling she doesn't want to see her own mirage. Why? It seems like this would be the kind of thing she really enjoys! I'm not sure at this stage, but I'll keep an eye on her. There's something else I wanted to tell you. I tried performing a divination again on the beach. My scry glass was still blurry, but I felt a force coming from within. I couldn't see its exact position, but I knew that it was changing. How could you tell that if you couldn't see it clearly? Hmm, how can I explain this concept to non-experts? Uh, oh, I know. It's like we're uh, sitting in a room and there's a crack in the walls. We don't know where it is, but everyone can feel the wind rushing in. Not only that, but the room is getting colder. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So you want to find where that crack is, right? You could say that. I need to see the crack first before deciding what to do next. <sighs> it seems like similar things happen every time I'm with you. I'll attempt divination, read the signs, zero in on the target, then solve the problem. You're surrounded by all kinds of friends, secrets, and destinies. It's incredible. No, you are incredible! You helped Fischl and us solve that Leonard situation! All things considered, I suppose. Let's hope we can all stick together and resolve this, like we did last time. When you say together, do you mean the two of you? Or all three of us? <laughs> Okay, okay, the three of us then. Sometimes Paimon offers an insightful perspective that can be very helpful to me. Really? Aww, Paimon's starting to like you a lot, genius astrologist Mona. Yes, that's the perspective I'm talking about. You'll never meet another astrologist as clever and charming as me. <laughs> yeah, everything about you's great. Except for, um, please don't laugh like Fischl again. Ever. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Friends' habits rub off on you when you spend a lot of time together, don't they? <laughs> uh, I'll keep observing the stars. Keep in touch, Traveler. Get up, Lazy Bones! The sun's so high, it's right in your eyes! Yeah, that's why you couldn't see that the sun's in your eyes! I trust you slept well? Sounds like the same story for everyone. 
I got up first today, so I took a walk around and picked some fruits for our breakfast. And Paimon's been waiting for you to get up so she can finally dig in! Huh? Fisha left? First thing in the morning? Yeah, she seemed unwilling to stay with us. She said she had some other work to do for the Adventurer's Guild. A likely story. What happened to coming here to restore the glory of the Immernachtreich? Now she has guild work to do all of a sudden? Judging by that look on her face, there was probably something on her mind. We tried sending Mona to comfort her like before, but she said Mona doesn't understand the work of the Adventurer's Guild and can't go with her. She didn't even make up some excuse about the Immernachtreich to get some time alone? Huh. That's out of character for her. Then she must be feeling quite troubled. I'd love to help her as a friend, but she was right about one thing. We're going to explore another island today. Yep. Votes are in. It's unanimous. Oh, yeah, about that. Paimon went ahead and voted for you. She said since you're always together, her opinion counts as yours and vice versa. <laughs> well, you're an adventurer after all. Paimon knew you'd want to go exploring. Fischl said there's something she wants to investigate and suggested that we all go ahead in the meantime. She told me not to worry. She'll catch up with us when she's done. Despite her... Works. She's still an experienced adventurer. I think we should trust her. I haven't known her for long, so this is just an observation, but it seems like she's struggling with some internal conflict. Hmm. That seems about right. In conflict with others, you either resolve it or let it be. But when the conflict is within yourself, it's much harder to do either. I've also had a time like that in my life, so I understand what she's going through. It may be best to give her some space. I agree. Still, it's a pity for today's adventure. Adventuring is always more fun when everyone's together. Xinyan always has great team spirit. Oh, one other thing. This morning, we saw a mirage on the island in the north. We can go take a look once you're done with your breakfast, Traveler. This island looks pretty normal. I smell something burning on the wind. Mm, my sky glass is getting clearer, but I still can't see much. Hey, look what I found. It's a... Well, is it a drum or a plant? An instrument made of a plant? Hmm. Xinyan, do you think this could be your island? Oh, you mean this instrument could have been put here just for me? Okay, let me give it a try. Uh, hold on. When I touched the rock garden in the bonsai yesterday, we were all transported to another space. Xinyan, do you want to take some time first to get ready? Oh, you're right, but it's all good. I'm always ready to make some music. Paimon, are you okay? Just as we thought. We've been sent to another place. Why does this place feel so bleak? Xinyan, are you sure this is your mirage? I think so, yeah, but... You're right. Why is it so bleak here? Look, there's something really bright over there. It's almost like it's inviting us to go check it out. Okay. Let's go have a look. Wait, wait, wait! This is too obvious! Surely it's gotta be a trap! That well may be, but there's also nowhere else for us to go. If this mirage belongs to Xinyan, I don't think we'll find any traps here. Now you're talking. You know that wouldn't be my style. Hmm. That makes sense. Ah, Alright, let's go then. But... Let's also make sure to be careful. The door is locked. Keep your nonsense to yourself, thank you very much. Xinyan, 
Why did you lock the door? <laughs> You'd think I'd know this. <laughs> oh, actually, I usually put my key under the flower pot next to the door, so maybe the key is nearby. Oh, is there a flower pot around here? Mm -hmm. I guess it's worth a shot. Flatter me. Wow! That flower is huge! Uh, it's so odd here. Is it because of that flower? Heck yeah! I wasn't expecting visitors! Ah, it talks! Pama knows, but this is different! Hi! We touched those drum like plants growing on the beach outside and were transported here. Uh, are you the owner of this place? This is the Hall of Music, and I'm merely its gatekeeper. Tell me, my friends, are you here to pursue the ultimate expression of music? Oh, you betcha. Then tell me, what do you hope to express with music? <laughs> the spirit of resistance. Right on, great answer. I'm so glad to hear that. I consider myself very lucky to meet another musician with the same ideals. Hearing giant flowers get along well with Xinyan. People who are easy to get along with make friends wherever they go. Well, if you've made it this far, you must wish to venture deeper into the Hall of Music. However, I must apologize. My singing voice is required for entry, but unfortunately my pipes are a little dry. Are you alright? Do you need, uh, some cold medicine or something? It's just that I haven't had any glacial spring water in a very long time. If I could drink some of that, my voice would be rocked and loaded and ready to clear your path. Uh, glacial spring water? Yeah, with one sip of that, anyone could sing the most beautiful song. No matter if they were a weary adult, a sleepy bird, or even an ignorant child. Oh. Okay, I'll find some for you. Where is this spring? Ah, oh, thanks. You're the best. Well, spring water helps plants grow up strong so they can scale the mountains that lie in their way, so I imagine the spring can be found somewhere on the mountain range protected by plants. You mean we have to go hiking? Oh, Paimon thought some seawater would be enough. Uh, spring water and seawater could not be more dissimilar. Oh, but you may need my powers in order to see the spring. Give me your hand, friend, so that you can see through my eyes. Thanks. You shook my hand. Guess that makes this friendship official. Ooh, we're out! Ooh, it's much brighter here. I, I didn't mind that hot cave, though. Glacial spring water can be found on one of the mountains around here. Let's all look for it. Wait. How can there be light coming from below the ground here? Is this a water vein? Well, according to that flower, the water vein is related to the plants, and the plants will lead us to that spring. So I guess we should follow the water veins. Well, the flow of water is blocked here. Is it because of that pile of rocks? Let's remove... Everyone, I found a note here. Oh, so that's how it is. 
What an interesting island. Look at this style and signature. It's from Albedo. He's one of our friends from Mondstadt. He's an amazing alchemist who's visited this island before. He left this note here for future adventurers. Oh, so it's him. He's saying this whole island has been turned into an instrument? Amazing! And the underground water veins play an important part, too. Oh! Maybe we need to clear all the water veins to play this island! Ah, uh, clean your instrument before the performance. Makes a lot of sense. This should be the glacial spring water we're looking for. So, if you drink this, you can suddenly sing like an angel? You should give it a try, if you're curious. Oh, no, 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 no. I I'm terrible at singing. It would be, um, extremely embarrassing if it didn't work. Oh, Mona. I actually think you've got a sweet voice that's well-suited for singing. If you're interested, I can teach you a few things about vocals once we get back to camp. Oh, really? I... I'd love to, but you'd have to promise you won't laugh at me. Of course not. Everyone's gotta start somewhere, right? Right. Then maybe I can give it a try. Great! <laughs> but before that, we should deliver the spring water to that flower. Okay. Well, to re-enter the mirage, we just need to touch the drum on the beach again. I'm feeling a lot better now. Thank you very much. Now, I'll send you to your destination. Woo! Ah, I'm going to lose my hat. Hmm? This scent. I think we've arrived at a mountain near Liyue. But it's so dark here. Wait, listen. There's a voice. Can you hear that? The reason the birds sing so sweetly is because they drink the spring water from up in the mountaintops. Xinyan, we're not singers in this family. None of us are. What makes you think you can be any different? Oh, so I just need to go drink some of this spring water, and then I'll be able to sing? Oh, I'll be right back, Mama. <laughs> You mustn't stay out so late in the mountains by yourself, child. You scared the bejesus out of me. Here, this is the spring water you were looking for. Really? Oh, you're the best, Daddy. Oh, where did she run off to this time? To find somewhere she could sing, no doubt. She can't be persuaded, and we can't stop her from walking out the door. Did you really have to lie to her like that? How was I supposed to know she'd go running off looking for spring water? Oh, when is she gonna come to her senses? Get down from there! You can't set up a stage here! If you can't sing, you should be keeping your mouth shut, not putting on a public performance. Ugh. Don't tear down the stage! Shen Yen, my dear child. Why are you playing that crass instrument again? It's not ladylike. Oh, Shen Yen, your mother has asked me to teach you some embroidery when I can find the time. Oh, it's an elegant and enjoyable craft. Just come to Annie's house whenever you're free. Quit making that racket by the side of the road. If you have to play, play something classy. Why are they being so mean? Oh, these people. Huh. Uh, that's it! Why are you not yelling back? What happened to your rock and roll spirit? <laughs> and now you're laughing? Aren't you mad? Sometimes it's hard to get mad when you hear the same thing a hundred times. <laughs> Still, thanks, Paimon. Uh, what? Auntie Jishong, how are you doing? Oh, dear child, I've been waiting to hear from you for a long time. This weekend, I'll be free. Auntie, stop thinking about me for a hot sec. Your stove is still on and you're cooking soup, right? 
<laughs> you see, it's all burnt. Oh, how did this happen? <laughs> oh my, Uncle Jew, Little Jew is playing in the mud by the river again. Didn't you tell him not to do that? What? That rascal is up to his old shenanigans behind my back again, is he? Oh, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> oh, sorry, Uncle High. I'll move my stage someplace else. But your musical taste needs to evolve if you want to keep up with the times. Maybe you didn't know, but even the most famous opera singer in Leroy likes listening to my boorish music. What did you say? Is that true? You're not making this up, are you? <laughs> I'll have to look into this. Oh, they're all gone. See? Knowing the right words to say and when to smile can solve almost any problem. <laughs> if that's the case, then what's your rock and roll spirit for? My rock and roll spirit isn't something I just use to win an argument. That'd be a real waste. Rock and roll is a revolution. Transforming your identity and destiny, saying goodbye to concessions and cowardice, it does them all. And most importantly, it lets you do it with art rather than words. My rock and roll has an unbreakable spirit, like a flame in a rainstorm that refuses to go out, or the magma that never stops boiling under the surface of the land. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go that way. There's a side path right there. What a great mindset you have. If anyone ever called me anything less than a genius, I'd be furious. Really? I'm not as tempted to give it a shot. <laughs> Una is glaring at me. <laughs> Come on. There's a difference between embracing the spirit of rock and roll and playing with fire. To tell you the truth, I'm also starting to develop an interest in rock and roll. Seriously? Oh, this better not be a joke. No, I'm serious. Rock and roll's ability to cultivate such a strong will in people is an incredible thing. Hey, is that? Another door. More delightful individuals await us on the other side, I assume. Let me handle it. Piece of cake. Miss, your hairstyle is really strange. <laughs> is that so? I think it looks really cool. Take a closer look if you don't believe me. Your hair sticks out from your head and you wear spiky things in it. Nobody else has hair like that. You're looking at it the wrong way. If I don't look like anybody else, once you've seen me, you won't be able to forget me, even if you try. You'll still recognize me if you ever see me again in the future. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Your clothes, hair, even the way you walk and talk. It's not just for the eyes of others. It's your style. So you should go with whatever you like. Really? But if I wore a jacket with a picture of a puppy on it, people would say, Hey, little Faye likes stupid little puppies. Then you should ignore them. So, you like puppies, huh? I do. What about your friends? Well, yeah, they do too. <laughs> well, then your friends are gonna love that jacket. Okay. Uh, miss, how come you don't do your hair in a nice braid? People would love that. No, oh, I can't help myself. I just like the styles with personality. Uh, plus, I had no idea how so many people would dislike it before I started wearing my hair like this. So, why don't you change it now? Well, this hairstyle suits my music and my lifestyle. The regular ones are boring. They're so uninspired. Plus, they get in the way when I'm head bobbing away on stage. <laughs> if people don't like it, that's up to them. I ain't gonna change it. What about your friends? Do they not like it too? Of course they like it. 
They all say that they think it looks amazing. Your friends are nice to you. That's cool. Not like my friends. They left me here on my own. <laughs> oh, hey, hey now. Why are you crying? What's wrong? You can talk to me. Little Lulu and Little Mung, they're ignoring me. We were gonna meet at the docks today, but they still haven't shown up. These kids are way too young to be standing each other up like this. No. Oh, stay right here. I'll go take a look around. I'll bring them to you once I find them. Oh, okay. Thanks, miss. I'll never say anything bad about your hair again. See? Now you're talking sense. I'll see you later. Excuse me, are you Little Mung? Little Faye is waiting for you at the docks. He's been waiting so long now that he's in tears about it. Oh, why is he so dumb? He could have just come here and found us. Oh, never mind. I'll go find him instead. He ran off. We should catch up to him. Uh, excuse me, are you little Lulu? Are you looking for me, miss? Didn't you promise to meet little Faye at the docks? Why aren't you going to meet up with him? He's crying because he thinks you've abandoned him. Huh? Oh, that silly dum-dum. Why didn't he just come to look for us? We prepared a surprise gift for him. A surprise gift? How strange. You dum-dum, we were preparing a surprise gift for you. We didn't think that you wouldn't come to try and find us, and definitely didn't think you'd start crying about it. I'm sorry for being such an idiot. No, I'm sorry. You're not an idiot. I guess we shouldn't have been so secretive about it. We didn't come to the docks to meet you because we wanted to give you a big surprise for your birthday. Huh? This is... We brought you loads of yummy lotus heads! And here's a handwritten birthday letter from me and Lulu, too. Uh, please don't call our handwriting ugly, okay? <laughs> You guys! <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> and all's well that ends well. It was all just a misunderstanding. Well, sometimes that's just what friends do. If my friends had ditched me to plan a surprise, I'd have gotten upset too. Is that a hint for us to prepare a surprise for you too? Very clever. No! Well, I was just speaking my mind. <laughs> I know. I was just joking, seeing if I could give you a fright. Uh, everyone? Paimon's hungry. It's almost lunchtime, so how about we have lunch at my house? It's not far from here. So, even your house is in this mirage? <laughs> yep, I just noticed. There's the same road in here as the one that leads to my house in real life. Even though we're in a mirage, I reckon some things will always remain the same. In real life, after a bad quarrel with the neighbors or a disappointing show, the one place I'll always go is my house. Because, well, everyone has to go home eventually. Here we are. Please, come in. Make yourselves at home. No need to take off your shoes. Thank you for your hospitality. Oh, chairs. We can finally unwind for a bit. Huh? Uh, did you guys hear a sound coming from the other room? Oh, you all keep resting here. I'll go have a look. Oh, the lights aren't even on. And there's no one... Whoa! Dun-dun-dun! Dun, dun, dun. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. What are you two doing? Why are you sitting in the dark inside my house? You scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Yunjin, you were totally right. She does get spooked. It's your birthday, so we planned a surprise party for you. <laughs> you girls really shouldn't pull these pranks while pretending to be all sweet and innocent. 
Huh? <laughs> Come on now, what's wrong with that? Who says that being cute and innocent means you can't pull pranks? Back me up, Xiangling. Totally, Yunjin. Guoba pulls pranks on me all the time, too. All right, all right, you win. <laughs> Beidou needs to do something today, so she has asked me to deliver her gift to you. So, here they are. A custom-made dagger and a score of a composition from abroad. As for my offerings, I have these gold hairpins and iron hair ties custom made for you by my family. Iron hair ties? You're telling me that your family used their 1,000 years worth of experience to make hair ties? What's the problem? Hair ties may look simple and unassuming, but they actually require a lot of intricate craftsmanship to make. <laughs> My gift is one of a kind. A little while ago, I came across a bespectacled blacksmith on the street. The way he worked and talked, it felt almost like he could see right through stones. I was skeptical, so I asked him to help me make a bet. And when the merchant cracked the stone open, there was indeed a piece of raw jade inside. <laughs> I took the jade on the spot and ground it into a pendant, which I then strung on a cord. You can use it as an accessory. Wow. You made a jade pendant for me? Yeah. Oh, don't wear it around your neck. Put it on your guitar. Every day I see how much you pamper that guitar, so I thought you should jazz it up a bit. I don't know if I can bring myself to hang this thing anywhere except in a display case on an altar. Thank you, Xiangling. You're so thoughtful. <laughs> Xiangling has always been thoughtful. But the blacksmith you mentioned, who could see through stones, can you tell me more about him? If the story's interesting enough, I might have to put it into my play. I'm not exactly sure, but I hear that he was sick for a while and was so disoriented during that time that he couldn't remember anything and felt as if his body didn't belong to him. And then, all of a sudden, he recovered. He's all fine now, except for some reason, he can now tell the difference between valuable and worthless stones just by looking at them. Hmm, that's certainly peculiar. No, let's not get into that. The food is getting cold. Let's eat! Wait, Xinyan, didn't you pick up a trick from an Outlander merchant? The one you taught me on my last birthday. Huh? Oh, you mean making a birthday wish? <laughs> yes, that's the one. They also light candles and cut cakes in other regions. But we didn't have time for that, because we were too busy bringing the food over. It's fine. I can just use my imagination. Okay, let's count to three and you can make a wish. One, two, three! Hmm, <laughs> what should I wish for this year? My wish is... we are in a mirage, Xinyan, did anything significant happen inside the house? Paimon knows! Paimon knows! She ran into some of her friends who were throwing her a birthday party! Yes, I heard all that. I mean, something she did herself. Oh, I made a wish! It's pretty interesting now that I think about it. When I entered the room, I found Shang Ling and Yun Jin, two of my best friends. That actually happened in real life. They paid me a surprise visit on my birthday, set a table with delicious food, and persuaded me to make a birthday wish. Xinyan, what was your wish? My wish was to perform with someone completely unexpected. Hmm, I wonder who this unexpected person might be. I've just figured it out. Oh, you already know the answer? Mm-hmm. 
However, before I tell you the answer, I'd like to clear the water veins that flow through the mountains. We've done everything we can, but how do we deal with the last two mountains? Let's stick to it. There's gotta be a way. After taking a closer look, it seems to me that most of the island mountains contain water veins and plants in their interior. Those together form a system that connects the mountains with one another. However, now that much of the mountains have collapsed, the connection of plants and water veins is blocked. If we can dredge all the blockages, we'll be able to connect the islands to form the giant instrument described in Albedo's notes and play music using the islands themselves. Yep, for me to reach my goal, we gotta do this. But first, I'd like to consult the flower. It should know what to do. Some of the plants and water veins on the island mountains have been lost. Do you happen to know another way to dredge the blockages? I know someone who can help you with that. Go ask my companion, Frozen Soul, who lives upstairs. Who are you? And what brings you to me? Nice to meet you. We were wondering if you could use your power to dredge the mountains on the island? Mountains? Oh. I see. You want to become great musicians too, right? Oh, is that what this is about? Correct. In that case, we seek the same thing. Despite my frailty, I feel obligated to share some of my power with you. Plant my pedal at the ending point of the intersection of melodies, and what had once sunk into the earth will re-emerge with the music. As long as there is music, life will continue to flourish in this world. Oh, thank you! So many regrets. Can you feel anything now that we've planted the pedal? Yes, I can feel it. The sun is shining brightly. The sea gleams like a gemstone. The waves lap the milky white beaches. And the grains of sand are pulled into the sea, then pushed back ashore. The seabirds are landing on the rocks pecking gently and making rhythmic sounds. Da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. <gasps> it's music. This is indeed music. In fact, this whole island is a giant musical instrument. Since you are a musician, you should be able to understand the meaning behind its original creation. <sighs> Making music with the tides, waves, and sea breeze as your instruments is the most romantic thing in the world! Let's go, everyone. It's time for my performance. <sighs> Finally, the time has come. Everyone, I once made a wish to perform with someone no one could have expected. And today, on this island, I found my answer. No one knows the name or appearance of the man who transformed this island into a giant musical instrument so many years ago, but he is unquestionably one of Devad's greatest musicians. I never imagined I'd be able to see such an instrument, and I never imagined we'd be able to play it during a high tide. No. Music is the gift one gives to their kindred spirit, so... I'll play something that makes for a better duet with the original musician. No rock music for today. Instead, I'm gonna show you something new.
lived here in the past. I hope you liked this song. How was it? Not bad, huh? <sighs> Quite impressive. I've never heard a duet like that before. It was very interesting. And so elegant as well. <sighs> Paimon's not sure how best to put it, but it was just super unique. <laughs> Thank you. And now I can say my wish has come true. Is there anything else you'd like to do? No. In fact, I reckon I'll get a good night's sleep tonight. Does this mean everyone is free for the time being? If so, I have a suggestion. I'd like to return to the Fatui camp and see what's going on there. Oh, so you've discovered the Fatui camp as well. Wait, you know about it too? Of course, I'm a genius astrologist. Didn't I mention that my scry glass has recovered a little? I can sense what's going on here through divination. Uh, I didn't know the Fatui were here too. Indeed. I also informed Fischl of this when we parted ways today. If she runs into them, she'll stay hidden and out of danger. I see. Then perhaps we should tell everyone what we know. Strange machine and delirious Fatui? Are you suggesting these are connected to the Mirage? I can't say I'm certain, but I don't believe they're completely unrelated. Fair enough. Let's go check out the camp. Whoa, where did they come from? <laughs> Strange that on our way here, we've only run into local monsters and no Fatui. How bizarre. There are still signs of the camp, and the machine is still here, but all the people have vanished. Oh, I give up. I'm just going to divine the answer. <sighs> hmm. What's this? Some kind of energy flow? Oh, sorry, everyone. I can't seem to find any trace of the Fatui. My scry glass has gotten hazy again, but this time, I can sense some sort of energy converging and taking physical form. The destination is... the island over there. Whose mirage will it be this time? Hmm. Let's head over and have a look. Maybe we'll be able to find something there. Here we are. Huh? Fischl? It's really her! Hey, Fischl! Hmm? Uh, my imprudent retainers! You finally arrived! Uh, oh, my! Long time no see! It hasn't been that long, has it? <clears throat> Main Fräulein and I sensed a peculiar aura and came here ahead of time to reunite with everyone. We weren't expecting you. Well, what I mean to say is, you arrived sooner than we expected. Is it just Paimon? Or does Oz seem nervous? The advent of the Imanuk Reich is imminent, and I still need to prepare for the consecration. Main Fräulein, are you sure you... I am quite capable of acting on my own, Oz. If you're weary of the encroaching darkness of the night, you are quite welcome to return to the blinding brightness of the day. Please, Main Fräulein, do not say such things. I am your loyal attendant, your eyes, and I will never leave your side. Stop staring at me like that! I... Anyway, the time of explanation... is not yet upon us. Hm. Oh, Main Fräulein... 
I do apologize, everyone. Main Fräulein is having a rough day. Please, do not take it to heart. I must also excuse myself now. Huh. Still no improvement in her mood, even after all this time away from the group. As soon as I saw Official, I realized that the mirage that's about to take shape here must have something to do with her. Yes. I, at least, felt a peculiar sense of familiarity when I approached my mirage. Me too! Even though it didn't really make sense, I just had a feeling that something exciting was gonna happen. Exactly. If Fischl and Oz can also sense something, then our suspicions are likely to be right on the Mora. Fischl's probably agitated because she doesn't want to confront her mirage. How come? Maybe her mirage conceals some secrets that she doesn't want anyone to know about. Let's all take a rest here for now. When the mirage appears, we will get to the bottom of this mystery. Are you awake? It might sound hard to believe, but no, nothing's happened. You're awake? <laughs> then let's bring you up to speed. We've searched everywhere and found nothing unusual at all. Based on the previous two mirages, we should have been able to find something that acts as an entrance. Is it possible that the time has not come yet? You mean we should wait a little longer? Yes. Plus, Fischl is still nowhere to be found, and I highly suspect that she's even more eager to find the entrance than we are. So, let's wait. Let's give the Mirage... No. Give Fischl some more time. book and next to it is hmm a raven statue this statue looks a lot like oz why did these two items appear together did the raven bring the book here what's the book about is it a diary let's see hymn of the holy land i i've never heard of a book by that title from the cover it looks like it was written by Fischl herself? That would certainly fit her personality. Him of the Holy Land. Interesting. I like it. As a title, it has a sacred ring to it. So, what should we do? Should we touch it? Fischl's still not back. Never mind. Let's head inside first. Once Fischl finds the book, I'm sure she'll be able to catch up with us. Paimon agrees! It's like we're peeping into her diary, so Paimon sure she'll want to come in and stop us. Though this truth has long faded from popular memory, scholars have long known that Prinzessin Fischl von Luftschloss Norfedort first descended upon the world during the time of chaos, roughly 600 years before the era of the saints. What? A narrator? <laughs> we really are inside a book, huh? There's even a narrator telling us the story. Oh no! The path has been cut off! We can't go across! Oh, there's a device over there that appears to be waiting for us to approach it. Is it just Paimon? Or does everything in this place seem just a little bit over deliberate. Well, it is the Holy Land. What did you expect? Yeah, everything's so blatant. It's clearly begging to be noticed. That's our official for you. The Princessin harbored much sympathy for all living things and wished to never see them in pain. She harnessed the power of darkness and dreams to weave the night and gave it the task to safeguard all living things. The people celebrated and worshipped the Princessin's authority and followed her call to migrate to the sacred land that would eventually be known as the Immer Nachtreich. It really is the Immer Nachtreich. Hmm, really looks the part. I'm quite impressed. 
We established a nation on the Holy Land, revered the Princessin as the Absolute One, and introduced poetry, theater, and adventure to the kingdom, laying the groundwork for the Immer When the rain finally ceased, the Princessin descended from the palace steps as to allow all her retainers to behold her unparalleled world. Someone, please help me! Uh, isn't this a statue? Please don't refer to me like that. My name is Leon, and I am a knight of the Immernoctrag. A knight? But you don't look like one. You can't tell. Anyway, please don't speak ill of Sire Osvaldo. He personally designed and distributed the armor for Dinoct Raven Ritter. Well, you must have heard that one before, surely. That was his full name, Osvaldo Hofnavines. Uh, oh, so Magistus was the easy pronunciation. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> or so it seems. Dear friends, I apologize for interrupting your lovely conversation, but I believe you haven't been informed that the gate ahead has been locked. Yep, that's news to us! I'm hoping you'll be kind enough to save me, and in exchange, I'll gladly teach you how to unlock the gate. Well, I guess we'll have to save you then. Valiant heroes, no words can express how grateful I feel right now. Thank you. Very much. Remember, this is the password that unlocks the gate. May my people be freed from the shackles of ancient decrees. May my people be freed from the shackles of ancient decrees. The great secretaire, the lords, and the devoted Nachraben Ritter mounted the tower to pledge their allegiance to the princessin, kissing the hem of her exquisite purple dress and taking pride in their loyalty. heard is the story from the book? So the Holy Land in the book's title refers to the Immernachreich. This book sings the praises of the Princessin from the perspective of the people in her kingdom. We're on the last page of the book, but the story doesn't seem to have ended. What happens next? Paimon wants to know what happens next! I guess we'll have to keep exploring. As for this book... Wait, I have an idea. Now that we've finished it... Let's close it. Huh? We've been transported again, but we're not back on the beach. We are somewhere in... Mondstadt. Greetings, Honorable Kaiserin Dover Ertelung. Amy, dear, I've made steak and fisherman's toast. Come on, eat up before they go cold. <sighs> Mother... Oh, look at me being so forgetful. Ahem. <clears throat> Dost thou knowest, Princessin Dover Ertelung, that the hour of luncheon encroaches? Of course, Mother. Ah, behold the view from the window, a delight to the senses. Princessin, Kaiserin, would you care to join the Kaiser Derva Utailang for a grand royal picnic? We shall enjoy the scenic view and partake of the delicacies granted to us by the heavens. Yes, I shall gladly join you. 
Uh, uh. Oh. Uh, does anyone want to say anything about that? Okay, I'll bite. So, Amy, that's Fischl's real name? Seems like it. The other two voices were probably her mom and dad. Why are you all giving me that look? Forgive me if this comes across as rude, but is your surname truly Magistus? Huh, you think I was bluffing? My full title is and always has been Mona Magistus the Astrologist. Oh, my apologies. Don't you think that's a bit long? Well, it's a special case. Only geniuses get titles like this. Well, that makes no sense. What are your thoughts on the scenes we just witnessed? Well, it seems that closing the book is one way of affecting change in this mirage. Well, I think it's sweet that Fischl's parents are willing to play along with her. Well, they probably didn't indulge her forever. Based on the voice, this was surely a memory from her childhood. It's a different story now she's grown up. You know a lot about Fischl, Mona. After all, we've been friends for quite a while. Speaking of... I wonder where Fischl is now. That voice mentioned that she was heading out. We may as well go outside and see if we can find anything. Oh! We're back! Wait! Why are we back? We haven't finished the story yet! This feels as awful as purchasing a counterfeit astrology tutorial or realizing you've forgotten your wallet in the middle of dinner. Uh, uh, this is torture. I think they're a little bit upset. To be honest, I also don't like to read books that end on an unexpected cliffhanger. <laughs> no one likes that. <laughs> All right, let's enter the Mirage again. Good idea! Let's go! Huh? We're still here. It's not working. That's odd. We were able to enter earlier, but now we can't. Why? Why are we being denied the opportunity to finish the book? This is pure sadism. Hmm. Maybe it's because we've already reached the end of this book. Before leaving the Mirage, we saw that the book had been flipped to the final page. I believe Him of the Holy Land is divided into multiple volumes. It's like one of those sneaky light novel marketing schemes. If you want to know what happens next, please buy the next volume. Blech. I have to see the ending. Oh, oh, y yes, the ending. Everyone wants to know how the book ends. Huh? Who's there? Oh, oh, she, heavens above, she saw me. Stand up straight, stand up straight. You're... I'm Ask Me For Directions Arnold. That name's a little on the nose. So, Arnold, let me ask you something. It's Ask Me For Directions Arnold. So, ask me for directions, Arnold. Let me ask you something. Yes, ma'am? Are there other volumes of Hymn of the Holy Land? Where can I find them? Oh, ho, ho. you're asking the right person. Hymn of the Holy Land is the sacred scripture of the Immernachreich. There are three volumes in total, with the other two stored in two high locations in the castle. If you wish to find the second volume, you must climb to the very top floor of the tower. Tower? You mean that tower over there? That is indeed the tower where the sacred scripture is stored. If you look closely to the cave right over there, you'll find a secret passage that will swiftly take you to the tower. Okay. Thank you, Arnold. It's Ask Me for Directions, Arnold. Do you have any other questions for me, fair maiden? Concerning, perhaps, 
my relationship status or monthly income? No. Goodbye. Let's ignore that, Raven, and proceed. There's a secret passage in the cave ahead that leads directly to the top of the tower. Oh, oh, but, ma'am, are you sure you're not interested in me? I only shared with you the secrets of the Immanachreich because of your great beauty. Ma'am, wait. Hey, stop. Who are you? You don't look like citizens of the Immanachreich. Explain yourselves. What's your purpose here? This place even comes with guards! Uh, what are you doing? How can you prove that you are Her Highness's retainers? <laughs> Such an absurd question betrays your ignorance. May my people be freed from the shackles of ancient decrees. The, that's the password of the Immanachreich! They really are Her Highness's retainers! Oh my goodness, we didn't know. Please, forgive us. Now step down! Y yes, we're leaving now. They're gone. This is the second volume of Hymn of the Holy Land. Everyone ready? Bring it on! However, the Immer Nachtreich soon became plagued by a perpetual nightmare. Tasrak, the wicked dragon infiltrated the subterranean, crossed the bottom of the sea, and eventually came to roam above the capital. Huh? A dragon? The only thing I notice is gloomy weather. Could the dragon be some kind of metaphor? If that's so, her arch-nemesis Tasrak, the wicked dragon, is made up of everything that opposes her and rejects her fantasies. <laughs> My faithful escort through the darkness. Pave the way for thy princessin with the truth thine eyes behold. All that is lowly escapes my gaze. It is but a mere illusion. Is this to say that a flaw unseen is a flaw that does not exist, main Fräulein? The princessin descended to confront the dragon. But the great battle was certain to damage the castle. Help me! Somebody, please! Ah, we just got to the interesting part! What did the princess say? That voice sounds familiar. Is it that not Graven Ritter fella again? Oh, thank goodness. Huh? What are you guys doing here? We should be the ones asking that. What are you doing here? I'm sorry you have to keep seeing me in such a wretched state. I suppose I'm still not good enough to play the role of a qualified Nocturne Ritter. Play the role? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm not a real knight. Rather, I'm a new actor who recently landed a job to play the role of a knight in a theater troupe. Ah, well, you see, that's where you're mistaken. Theater is an essential part of Immenachtreich's culture. A fantastic theatrical performance is the greatest tribute we can pay to Her Highness. Oh, so this is your local culture? Exactly. So I'm delighted that I got to play the knight. Why does the princess enjoy the theater so much? Her Highness once said, celebrate me by staging a play in the wilderness. Bow down to me and bring me beautiful dreams in return for everlasting glory within the eternal darkness. I believe it is because Her Highness appreciates true art and can also sense emotions hidden deep within the souls of humankind. The crystallization and sublime expression of emotion is the heart of theater. People who truly understand theater always have a beautiful, sensitive heart, filled with a rich array of emotion. Oh, so that's how it is. Thank you for your answer, Sir Knight. Uh, oh, th thank you so much for calling me a knight. <clears throat> so, basking still in this honor, I will be off to my battleground. May we meet again. Hopefully not. Be more careful in the future. 
Oh, and please remember the password to unlock the gate. Upon my command, spread your wings and take flight. Upon my command, spread your wings and take flight. Ah, the book has appeared. Greetings, my most esteemed father and mother. Today is celebrated as a festival in the Imanakreish, and I hope you can both spare some time. <sighs> Amy, come on now, darling. You can't be carrying on like that at this age. You're a big girl now. It's time to forget the fairy tales. Uh, but... Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I've bought you a new set of music course books. Give them a read, won't you? You should dedicate your time to something more... meaningful. Oh. Uh, okay, Mom. I, um... I understand. We're back again! I believe we have just witnessed the true nature of the Wicked Dragon. Uh, this is something I am all too familiar with. There are always people who believe that our passions are a waste of time. Huh? You're... Ask me for directions, Arnold! Uh, I mean, you're back. Why? Oh, but... I came because I bet you'd be looking for the third volume of Hymn of the Holy Land. Well, you bet right on that front. You need not do anything for me, my dear lady. The opportunity to behold your beauty is the finest reward I could ask for. I shall give you the answer you seek. The third volume of Hymn of the Holy Land can be found on the top floor of the royal castle. Is it guarded by anyone? Oh, 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 but of course, sir. What sort of question is that? No nation would treat its most treasured books as if they were just cast out into the wilderness. That means we will still find Nachtraben guard stationed there. It is a citizen's utmost honor to guard the sacred scriptures. But it matters not. I'm quite sure the fine lady merely seeks to peruse them and has no malicious intentions. Your face is captivating and full of wisdom, and the company you keep appears to be heroes of some renown. I have the utmost faith that you will be able to comprehend the meaning behind the stories in our sacred scriptures. Her Highness's accomplishments were documented by Oz, the great secretaire, and became great treasures of the Immernachreich. I wish Her Highness joy and happiness every time I read those books. Stop! It's you guys again. What's your problem? We're the princess's personal retainers. Cut the lies! Her Highness doesn't keep company with nobodies like you. Oh, really? Are you prepared to take responsibility for what you just said? I'll say it again. Her Highness doesn't keep company with... Who are these nobodies you speak of? Her Highness and Sir Oz! I must say, guards, it's immensely disrespectful of you to make such remarks to the retainers of the Imanakreish. <sighs> How dare you treat one's hand-picked retainers with such disdain! Be gone! But... Don't you but me! Y yes Your Highness. Oz, you're back in the crew! Hmm. You may consider that the case for the time being. What main Fräulein means is that it took us a long time to reach this place. She couldn't bear to leave you all here, even though she did not wish to confront this mirage. Didn't want to confront it, huh? <sighs> Sounds like Mona was right. It felt like we were peeking into your diary. Nonsense. D 
Despite the existing threats, the unrivaled glory of the Imanachreich would not exist in this world if I, the Princessin, were the sort of person who could be easily swayed. What Main Fräulein means to say is that there are other troubles in this area. Troubles? Have you run into anything dangerous? Um, this matter can be revisited later. For now, let us proceed with more important work. Let's get this show on the road. The book's right in front of us. Let's not just stand here. Hmm. Majestic, but fragile. Vast, yet vulnerable. This domain both amazes and sickens me. She means that she has never seen such an extravagant mirage before. And even she is enthralled by it. There's a castle here, but some parts seem to be missing. Fischl, is this yours? Um, allow me a moment to reminisce. Main Fräulein, you may recall that this is the toy castle you accidentally destroyed in a moment of deep distress. Oz, don't say it out loud! I suddenly recollect that two pieces are currently missing from my royal domain. So we have to find two missing pieces. Smoke amid a downpour of the dragon's blood. She said, May my people be freed from the shackles of ancient decrees. Such wise and compassionate words could only come from your own writing, main Fräulein. Hmm. Yet this kingdom appears to be anything but what I've described. The shadows lurking behind the scenes are disconcerting. Princess Fischl again continued her so she picked up mere stones to carve out mountains and oceans before bestowing upon her people castles and towns. My magnificent kingdom is a small and forbidden paradise. When the people worshipped her, she replied, Celebrate me by staging a play in the wilderness. Bow down to me and bring me beautiful dreams in return for everlasting glory within the eternal darkness. That sounds like a happy ending to Paimon! Paimon had a feeling he'd show up... again. Please don't say that! I can assure you that... Fella, if you want to survive and thrive, you should be more careful next time. A successful journey requires perseverance, courage, as well as a keen sense of danger. You have the first two, but in the future, please strive to be more vigilant. I shall remember your words for the rest of my life. But it is time to say our final goodbye. You may not have noticed, but the weather has improved, and the sea has become pleasant and calm. We have awaited this day for a long time. You may be amazed that someone as reckless as me could become an actor, but please believe me when I say it's not by chance. Every Knocked Raven is looking for a way to contribute to the world. We just want to find our place, our destiny. We were born to seek the roles that fate has assigned us to play. You may not be aware that Hymn of the Holy Land is also a book of prophecies. Prophecy? But Paimon thought it was a sacred scripture. Yes, it is. Hundreds of years ago, the Imanacht Reich was engulfed by a menacing shadow. But our ruler stood by and did nothing, as if she had lost interest in ruling the kingdom. Soon after, Oz, the great secretaire, appeared among us. He brought us the sacred scriptures, and a most encouraging prophecy. That prophecy is just as it's described in the book, and predicts a blessed future for the Imanacht Reich. As a result, we became convinced that the gloomy skies would eventually clear, 
and we have been eagerly awaiting for that blessed day. The Soteria, the Princess and Derverurtailang, she will eventually remember the paradise of the Immernochtreich. And on that day, we will devote to her the plays that were promised in the prophecy. That is why I have stepped forward to take on the role of a warrior. I do whatever it takes to prove my devotion to her. <clears throat> y Your Highness! Oh, right! Yeah, she was lurking in the back when we rescued you for some reason. My citizen, thy will is strong enough to sunder the wicked dragon's wings. I shall now receive thy blessing. It is my utmost honor. Thou hast done well. Tis almost most evident that thou dost possess the virtues of a knight. Go, take thy position, and wait for the performance to begin. We commend your unfaltering loyalty to Her Highness. Her Highness will now lead her retainers into battle against the shadow that plagues the Imanakreish. Thank you, Your Highness. And thank you, everyone. In that case, I will take my leave. Oh, by the way, please keep in mind that the password for the gate ahead is... Zian, mein Somenachtgarten. Paimon's confused. What were you guys roleplaying just now? <sighs> Is there not a single one of my lords and ladies who understood my precepts? Fools. What Main Fräulein means to say is that you are all rather stupid. Yeah, you didn't need to translate that. I suppose this is the important business Her Highness warned us about earlier. Let's get this over with. Huh? Wait, what is it? What's happening? Time to go. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Zian, mein summer not garden. There's the book. Let's go in closing. Let's hope we won't get transported to another strange place this time. Library? Why are we inside a library? <sighs> you must be the arch nemesis I've been looking for. The useless and cowardly so-called princessin. <laughs> How laughable. What gives you the impression that you can defeat me? You should know over the past few days, I've seen all of your fear and trepidation. Why is there another you? Is it a shadow? Shadow? Yes. I suppose that probably describes our connection aptly enough. <laughs> so have you come to surrender to me, little Amy? <laughs> you... Hmm. And that raven over there. You must be Oz? Excellent. I have been waiting for you for a long time. I heard that a great secretaire named Oz brought the Hymn of the Holy Land into the Immanachreich. I suppose that was you? At your service, Main Fräulein. Why did you call her Main Fräulein? As you can see, that's also Main Fräulein over there. And if she is Main Fräulein, then does that not make her my master? Seems logical enough. Well inform you that the Immanachreich is a place with no way out. Now that you've made it here, I shall crush you and make you my servant. As for Oz, despite bringing over that hideous book of prophecies and causing the foolish citizens to fall to their knees worshipping that piece of nonsense, why don't you come over to my side? After all, Fischl is destined to team up with Oz. Main Fräulein flatters me. I see no reason to refuse. Oz? Where do you think you're going? Oh, he's actually going over to the other side. Fischl, haven't you taught your raven anything about loyalty? 
Oh, this is not the time to discuss my shortcomings! Have you been bewitched, Oz? Why should you trust that she's telling the truth? Is not the Imanok Reich a sacred land of liberty and theater? You are gravely mistaken if you presume the Imanok Reich to be some kind of amusement park. Listen closely. It is a tomb for those who cannot face reality. You will be buried here. And I will take Oz, the product of our imagination, and live forever in the royal castle. A tomb? You of all people should know about this. Why does it always rain in the Imanok Reich? Why isn't there any music in this so-called paradise? Because of you! It's all because of you! <laughs> How pathetic! No, dearest Amy, you, not I, are the one responsible for all of this. <laughs> You dreamed up a vast kingdom, but you can't bear its weight. Swayed by fear, you can't face the very world you've created. You may try to avoid it, but the fact is, you can't change yourself. I came here in your stead precisely because you failed to show up. The Imanok Reich is now mine, and it is not your place to tell me what to do. I... 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 Amy, you are but a weak fool who does not deserve this world. Be gone. Hey, are you done? For you to give yourself such a piece of your mind, it must have been bothering you for a long time. <laughs> Mona... <laughs> What's that look on your face? <laughs> I... I... You're not going to admit defeat, are you? <laughs> I hate to admit it, but... She might be right. No. Please, do not think that. Your Highness, do you still remember why we came here? Kazuha? I am a samurai from Inazuma who's been entrusted with your safety. These individuals also responded to your call. Having your own tomb does sound pretty cool, but the Imanok Reich is not a tomb. <gasps> Shenyan! Oh, so you've made some friends. But do you really think that's enough for you to defeat me? I am your fear, your dark side. I am the nightmare from which you have never escaped in all these years. Standing before me, you are nothing! <laughs> no, I can't. I... I can't lose. Not now. I will be the one to claim victory. Just you wait. I will make you regret everything you said. Take it one step at a time and don't rush. You can win as long as you maintain a level head. Get it together. Don't lose to anyone and definitely don't lose to yourself. You ain't weak. It's not true at all. Oh, my divination attempts are working again. And the stars say the official I know will obtain a landslide victory. Impossible! How did you make it through that nightmarish library? Stand down! <sighs> Do you still think I'm going to lose? You! You looked down on me. You thought I was a worthless coward. And yes, I did used to be like that, because... I am someone who can't face reality, who spends all day daydreaming, and can't cope with setbacks or criticisms. 
But now I understand. I understood as soon as I first laid my eyes on this mirage. Do you see that incredible world out there? So vast, so breathtaking. That is my imagination. The source of my power. You act so arrogant under that dark cloak of self-obsession. But that's not your true nature. You're no princessin. You're just a narcissistic speck of dust hiding in my shadow. You are the true loser. The one who's holding me back. <laughs> You hide your fear and cowardice behind a facade of thorns and self-loathing. You are far weaker than me. Now give it back! What? Return to me what is rightfully mine. The Imanach Reich, the castle, my people. And most importantly, my companion Oz. Oh, main Fräulein. You speak with such eloquence and vigor now. You've truly matured into the princessin. You've got some nerve opening your beak, traitor. No, main Fräulein, I've come here to prove something to you all. As we all know, Oz will always follow Fischl, the princessin Deva Ertelung. It should make no difference whose side I am on, because you're both Fischl. But consider this. When I switched sides, you did not lose your identity, did you? Indeed. These are words of wisdom. What do you mean, my identity? Whom do you suppose Fischl truly is? Huh? This is my question to you, main Fräulein. Fischl is... Well, Fischl is... She's a loser! A coward who refuses to confront her true self behind the fantasies and lies! No, you are wrong. Fischl... is... me? Ah, you caught on most rapidly. Huh? That's it? Indeed, main Fräulein. Fischl is sometimes the Princess Endeavor Ertelung, and other times not. She may be courageous and arrogant, but she may also be weak and cowardly. Fischl is you, both noble and humble. She is a first-rate adventurer with few friends and the Princess Endeavor Ertelung, the sovereign of the Immunachreich. Fischl is both timid and strong. She's afraid of others' gossip, yet yearns for their respect. Most importantly, Fischl is often self-deprecating, beating herself up countless times, yet she always finds a way to rise again. Main Fräulein, no one merits the name Fischl more than you do. It's a complex yet simple name that represents the beauty of dreams and liberty. With or without loyal admirers, Amy will always be Fischl. You are Fischl, the Enlightened One, who has always carried that belief in her heart. May my people be freed from the shackles of ancient decrees! Thank you for creating the Immanachreich and giving us a homeland, for authoring the Hymn of the Holy Land in your subconscious, which offered us hope for a bright future. Please, embrace your darkness and return to your true form, your highness. <sighs> Woo! Fancy dress facial vanished! Wait a minute! And now she's back? Shadow seems to have returned to Fischl's heart, where it belongs. <laughs> Everyone, lend me your ears. There she is. <laughs> Citizens of the Immanachreich, 
Do you hear my summons? Yes, your highness. Oh, there she goes again. I am so done with this. Oz speaks the words of truth. Today is a grand occasion, for it is the day that I seize back my heart and reclaim control of my kingdom. I hereby announce, welcome to the Yemenakreish. Yay! Yay! Mm. One stormy night, a girl found a way to the future in the library. She said to herself, I shall create my dream kingdom. I'll carve mountains and oceans and erect castles and towns. Then she spoke to those who shared her dream. Please be proud of all that is unreal, for we are greater than this world. For our magnificent kingdom is a small and forbidden paradise. day. I reclaimed my heart and became the true princess in Dover Ertalung. The Emanachreish really appeared. Even so, I know that all the negative emotion I've been harboring in my heart will not simply go away. And that's okay. I'll carry these imperfections with me as I fight on, because I now know that what I have is unique and wonderful. Official! The stage is all set up outside! Wanna go check it out? Lady Paimon, do watch your words. Oh! Right! Uh, okay. Um, Your Highness, wouldst thou care to venture outdoors and... Uh, check if stuff out? <clears throat> How dare you, retainer of mine, mock the great and dignified Princess Endova Ertalung! <laughs> I concur. <clears throat> now, let us rejoice and celebrate this historic moment for the Imanachreish! Oh, what Main Fräulein means is that she entreats you to celebrate the arrival of the Imanachreish with utmost zeal and great joy. We get it! Please don't translate her words back into official speak! Uh, watching a theater performance in a nation like this must be quite an experience. As for the puzzle I'm working on, I should have an answer soon. Oh! There's something we've got to do! Your Highness, Oz, please excuse us for a moment. <laughs> Very well. See you soon. Come on, let's try to contact Venti again. Oh, it's you. Huh? That isn't the tone deaf bard. You're right, we've never met before. I know you want to communicate with someone beyond the islands, but you can't do that right now. So, I cut off your connection. Huh? Wouldn't you rather find out the answer for yourself than ask someone else? The fantastic mirage represents the deep dream, the most fundamental reflection of the human heart. Go see for yourself. Witness everything with your own eyes. And when this is all over, tell me what you feel about it. Oh, this is weird. How was she able to cut off our connection to Venti? And why would she want to know what you feel? <sighs> nope, Paimon doesn't get it. It's kind of eerie, but... But Paimon will protect you. Paimon will be there for you no matter what. Everyone, over here! Is everyone awake now? Mona says that she has something important to tell everyone. 
The first glimmering daybreak after the return of the Imanakreish most certainly revitalizes one's innermost spirits. What Main Fräulein means is that she is ready to take on the next challenge. Yeah, we're rested and ready too! Alright, then I'll get to the crux of the matter. I just peeked into my scry glass and there's a new mirage forming on that island over there. And I have a feeling that this one is my mirage. Oh, so now it's Mona's turn! You were with us for all of ours. Seems like it's time for us to go with you into yours. Uh, well, I'm sure there's nothing to see, really. Lady Magistus, are you embarrassed? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's not like I'm worried about everyone judging me after seeing my embarrassingly pathetic mirage or anything. This emphatic no sounds rather like a thinly disguised yes. Well, <clears throat> astrologists are often regarded as something out of this world, right? But what if my mirage is nothing like that? Fret not. Your princessin is not so foolish as to entertain preconceived notions on how thy mirage should or should not present itself. Yeah, me neither. Not that I have low expectations of you, Mona, but personally, I think you're a kind soul. And you shouldn't feel like you have to live up to anything more than that. I'm sure Mona's mirage will stay true to her kind heart. Yeah! And it's not like we're going in there just to do some sightseeing. There's other reasons too, right? Really? Well... Okay, then. I suppose I'm not worried as long as everyone doesn't get too excited. All right, then. Let's get going. According to my scry glass, we've arrived at the Mirage. Okay, let's find the entrance first. Is that it? Over there? This looks like some kind of pool. Uh, we're not gonna have to swim to get in, are we? Huh? Wait, do we have a non-swimmer among us? No, I don't think that's the real problem here. <laughs> Someone's scared, huh? Well then, I'll go first. Oh, and there she goes! She's gonna show off her oh-so-perfect swimming skills now! <clears throat> Please be mindful of your wording, main Fräulein. Oh, right. See you later! Whoa! Mona dived right into the pool and disappeared! Let's catch up with her! What a spectacular structure. Wow. I've never seen anything like this. Hey, uh, Mona, your mirage is amazing. Though it falls short of the glorious Imanakreish, one must admit that it is an impressive realm nonetheless, Lady Magistus. <sighs> At least it's not showing me getting lectured by the old hag. Thank goodness. Well, what else would you expect of a genius astrologist's mirage? Okay, let's get started. I've always been very proud of my talent in astrology. Huh? What in the... Is that my voice? I believe that astrology is a valuable discipline and that it is capable of revealing the inner workings of this universe. Oh, that's 
me talking to myself. When people discovered I could perform divination, they began to bombard me with inquiries. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? Being the honest person I am, I told them exactly what I saw through the scry glass. bring about resentment, I... I couldn't lie in the face of such a noble art. Astrology is a scam. That's insane. Can you please leave me alone now? I need some space. as if I was being stabbed with razor-sharp knives formed by their disappointment. I could see the future, yet I felt miserable, as if I'd fallen into an abyss. Lady Magistus, this is heartbreaking. Ugh, please don't try to comfort me. It'll only make me feel embarrassed. Come on, you don't need to pretend in front of us. You need a hug. N no <laughs> That was really how I felt back when I first started out in astrology, but... I've matured now. I'm no longer so easily swayed by random people's opinions. Who would have thought? Even Magistus, the court archmage, was not spared of vexatious times in her career. It must have been difficult to be misunderstood by others. I'm glad that you were able to move past that. Actually, there are many who have given up astrology due to similar circumstances. But I am a genius, so it's only fair that I'm able to accomplish what others cannot. It's pretty inspiring to hear you say all that in an amazing place like this. Yes, good. Keep going. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, but the door is that way. All right. Now I'll let you shower me with praise after all the mysteries are solved. Huh. The surroundings appear to have changed. This isn't the beach we originally left. The area appears to be the mountains of Mondstadt. Wait, have we been sent back to Mondstadt? Yet the boundless ocean still surrounds us. There should be another pool around here for us to enter. Over here, y'all! Letting us enter. Oh, something seems to be floating on the water there. Uh, is it a painting? Or what is it? It seems to be hinting at a specific place. It is anticipating that the princessin would guide her loyal followers to the location that has been chosen by fate. Why is it always you that has to take the lead? <sighs> Whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's just find this place first. Astrology reveals the truth unreservedly. But not everyone is willing to accept their faith. No matter. Running into difficulties is part of practicing the craft. I must also become stronger myself in order to convince people. I once met an adventurer on a mountain who also happened to be picking fruits. He was even kind enough to share some with me, so in return, 
I agreed to perform a divination for him. The results were terrifying. I advised him to give up adventuring as soon as possible, otherwise he could... He fell silent for a while. Surprisingly, he didn't doubt the results of my divination like others had, but he looked quite perplexed. Even so, I have to keep going. Adventurers can't just give up in the face of hardship. With that, he picked up his pack and headed for the peak. However, try as I might, I could never forget that incident. Why is that? Oh, we're back again. So, uh, Mona, is that adventurer dead now? <sighs> that was the only time I ever saw him, and that was more than three years ago, which means he's no longer alive. But isn't there still a chance that he's alive? You know, like maybe you just made a mistake. You can't call it divination if you reject anything bad and believe the good unreservedly. That's just self-deception. Of course, casually performing divination for fun might be a different matter, but in my field of expertise, there's no room for lies. To contradict my own reading would be a blasphemy against astrology. Cruel, but truthful. Such is fate. I don't usually say things like this, but while we're on the topic, I really hope you don't confuse astrology with those fortune stick peddlers that you see along the streets. Astrology does not exist to please. We astrologists are here to verify and witness the truths of this world. Ugh. Which is why astrology is a disdained profession. It is a mighty art, but unfortunately one that annoys people nonetheless. Why dost thou protest so much, Lady Magistus? Thou seems not to be the sort with whom one would be loath to be associated. What main Fräulein means is that she's glad to be friends with you. No, that's not exactly what I said. Whatever has gotten into you, Oz, you misinterpret my utterances with increasingly alarming frequency. Oh my, why could that be? Perhaps I have been concerned that Main Fräulein could offend her friends and have been attempting to soften her words. Although you're the only astrologist I know, you've left an awesome impression on me. You're not annoying at all. Those who go snooping around for secrets yet ignore whatever they don't want to hear, they're the ones who should reflect on themselves. Knowing your fate doesn't come cheap. If one could simply avoid fate with just a few words, no one would have to endure the pain of parting. Mona, don't take others' comments to heart. Follow your heart and never forget what's right. Oh, it, it, I don't need comforting, thank you very much. I'm very tough, you know. Oh, uh... Well then, um... <sighs> Thank you. What dost thou say? Speak up and offer your highest reverence and blessings to the princessin. Okay, okay, your highness. Instead of making a scene, why don't you go collect the other fragments in the new location reflected by the pool? We can't enter the mirage without them. Main Fräulein, you are the only one with eyes sharp enough to locate the secrets. <sighs> if that's the case, very well. I shall proceed to the beach. Let's go, Mona. Oh, okay. Coming! <laughs> We've returned here once more. Looks like the story's not finished yet. Let the adventure continue. Oh, wait, how the... 
Another house in Mondstadt? What are we doing in my house? Your house? This is your house? My, how unexpected. I heard Lady Magistus lived a modest life. But this abode... Look at the labels on these books on the ground. Only one of its kind? 990,000 mora? Hey, that's super expensive! There are so many expensive-looking hardcovers over here. So this is what an astrologist's room looks like. The rooms are exquisitely designed. This place must be very expensive. Hey, I'm just occasionally out of Mora, that's all. I never said I was a pauper. You're not? Oh, so what about those times I treated you to meals and had you over to my place for dinner? Mean Fräulein, mind your phrasing. <clears throat> Thou wert blessed with the coveted opportunity to enter the palace of the Imanach Reich and meet with the Kaiser and Kaiserin de Verertelung. Or hast thou conveniently forgotten this magnificent occasion? Oh, yes! The stew and cold cuts your mother made were heavenly. <laughs> I could go for some more of that right now. Lady Magistus, this is not the time for such things. Is that Mondstadt cuisine? I want to try some. I heard Mondstadt has lots of local delicacies, especially meat dishes. Hmm. Then I shall extend to you the honor of meeting the Kaiser and Kaiserin with me on a future occasion. Really? Hey, we should go too! Now that you mention it, it has been a while since I visited a friend's house. I shall gladly oblige. Oh, but shouldn't we bring some sort of gift? Those two are very kind and understanding, so please, don't worry about that. Just bring yourselves. You seriously have to try her mom's cold cut platter. It's a specialty or something. <laughs> anyway, it's simply delightful. Not to interrupt, but perhaps we should start working on the puzzle at hand? Ever since I entered this place, I have found myself most preoccupied with that ornament. Oh, right. Astrologists are able to understand the most complex signs among the stars. And because of this, they are not allowed to show any arrogance. If one believes that astrology grants them unlimited power, they will face banishment by the stars. In the past, I was ignorant enough to think that I understood all fates in the universe. Maybe it was some form of punishment. But I became lost. I couldn't see the stars any longer. You should not get confused. If you should become confused one day, not even astrology will be able to help you then. That's what the old hag said. We astrologists can't predict our own fate. But today, those words seem to carry a different meaning. I understand now that people won't always follow a beacon's guiding light. Even though the way forward may be dark and dangerous, they will still resolutely forge ahead. Fate is called such precisely because it cannot be altered or reversed. I understand the governing laws of the universe and have glimpsed secrets between heaven and earth. Observing it is enough for me. There's no need to force it to change. There are no perfect legends and no heroes that can save everyone. Instead of dwelling on my helplessness, what I should do... ...is seize my own destiny. Magnificent view! Lady Magistus, 
I believe this is the firmest evidence yet of your immense genius. You truly are the greatest archmage in the history of the Immanachreich. Thank you. Although the Immanachreich really doesn't have that much of a history. Stars like diamonds and the moon like a pearl. This is the most brilliant night sky I've ever beheld. It's beautiful. To call up such a mirage, Mona must have a vast and boundless sea of stars in her heart. Hmm. Oh, I'm just thinking. These must be the things that we aspire to. This night sky is incredibly beautiful. In fact, I might go so far as to say it's even more beautiful than what I usually see in divinations. All the stars are in their rightful place. This is definitely my mirage. Only here can I see extraordinary sights like these. Extraordinary? Why do you say that? You know, the night sky of Tevat is truly marvelous. All the answers in the world seem to have been hidden within. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? As your stars move across the sky, they record all your life events in their path. And among all the people in the world, a considerable number will see their stars deviate from their path. When your stars are on track, it means you will be healthy, happy, and at peace. Conversely, if your stars go off track, everything will get worse. The starry sky in my divinations would never look as perfect as this. Some stars would lose their way, and others would fall. I wish everyone could be happy and stay on track. To this end, I offer advice and tell the truth. I know it's useless. All fates are already revealed in the night sky, with mine too, just another among them. I can't change anything. Even so. Outside of astrology, outside of the words of truth, I still cling to the wisp of an irrational fantasy. We must all live within the confines of reality, but... Call me presumptuous. But I still believe in miracles. In this vast sea of stars, there are stars for you, for me, for everybody. What are the chances of one star encountering another? Are these encounters not the most wonderful miracles in all of destiny? <laughs> I don't know. But within Tevat, the stars in the sky will always have a place for us. Even if astrology is resolutely rational, Fate remains arbitrary, cruel, but romantic. <laughs> I think I've figured out what those stars are hiding. Now I will seize my own destiny. There was a transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. We're back here again! So, are we completely out of the mirage? How strange. My mirage didn't contain any hints on the Tui or the machine. Does that mean they had nothing to do with these mirages after all? Or perhaps these mirages are a mere consequence and not part of a process at all? Um, Paimon's lost! I mean, these mirages were not steps towards solving the mystery, but rather a direct effect of whatever's going on. 
someone did something to bring the mirages into being. As they were just passive side products, it was natural that they couldn't provide us with any useful information. In other words, those mirages were only about ourselves. Hmm. Pure materializations of ourselves. Interesting. <laughs> Everyone, maybe we should go back to where this whole thing began. During our first day on the island, the Traveler and I checked out the Fatui camp together. We found a strange machine there, as well as some disoriented Fatui. The researcher who spoke to us claimed that the machine was just a Fatui industrial invention. He even promised to not disturb us. Right, right! And the Cappy Cap guy looked half asleep the entire time! He kept talking nonsense! I wonder... Is it possible that madness and mirages are two different outcomes of the machine's influence? If so, everything can be traced back to that damaged machine. Except for the difference in how it affects people. This, I believe, is caused by differences between the affected people themselves. Oh. When you put it that way, it is indeed difficult to distinguish dreams and hallucinations. So what you're saying is, the device affected us differently because we are different from the Fatui. Yes, and according to our observations over these past few days, I think the difference is that we all have stronger willpower. Yeah, I can get behind that. People with strong willpower will hallucinate instead of falling into madness. But those who break too easily can't maintain a stable mirage. In other words, we should go back to the Fatui camp and destroy that machine right away! No, it should be repaired rather than destroyed. What Maid Fräulein means is that rashly destroying a machine we do not understand may lead to more serious consequences. It would be better to find a way to repair it first. Right. It pays to be cautious. If my guess is correct, a machine is capable of influencing the human brain, so we'd better tread carefully. So let's go now! There's no time to waste! Hey, look! Isn't that the same guy we saw on our first day here? <laughs> Everyone's gone crazy! Everyone should get out of here! Well... They'll never wake up. But I was right, my precious. <laughs> you are invincible. <laughs> precious? What's his precious? A miracle machine. Definitely not impossible. I think he's referring to that machine. What a drunkard. Hmm. Oh, goodness. The smell of alcohol. Maid Fräulein, please allow me to fan the fumes away with my wings. Oh, excellent! Please, fan them away for me, too. Certainly. I've checked the surroundings, but there's no one else here. Isn't that strange? The Fatui is a big organization. But he's the only one left at this camp. What's more, we didn't even see him the last time we were here. Even the larger gentleman from the first time is missing. I think they must be hiding somewhere. As for why they may be hiding, I'm afraid we'll have to ask him. But he's as drunk as Tone Deaf Bard! <sighs> Should we wait for him to sober up? Cleanse him with the Holy Spring of Punishment! Main Fräulein means to splash him with water. Ooh, sounds like a good idea! Let's try! Hey, he opened his eyes! Uh, huh? Hey, are you one of the Fatui? Can you tell us what happened here and what that machine is for? <laughs> Fatui? Ha! 
for Chewie. Uh, those blockheads from the administration will regret it now. <laughs> That's what you get for rejecting my research and forcing me to... Forcing me to... To conduct my research on this deserted island. My precious... My precious! Uh, why is he crying? Looks like he has a lot of pent-up emotions. You mocked me! And my precious invention! You... You don't know anything about the future! Only my invention can help us conquer the world! <laughs> idiots! Such idiots! <laughs> Ow! Don't hit me! I won't blow up the lab again. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. This man's gone insane. There's no way we can communicate with him. He wasn't like this when we first met him. It looks like the effects have grown worse, to the point of driving him mad. My, my manuscript. My manuscript. Only that can, can save. <laughs> manuscript? Where is it? Don't yell at me! Don't yell at me! <laughs> Fischl, don't yell at him! Hmm. Then I'll... <sighs> Let me try. A uh, kind sir, look at me. Now tell me, where did you hide your manuscript? <laughs> no! No, don't force me to write a report! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> oh, he's completely lost in his own imagination. Allow me. Hmm. Please excuse me. <laughs> oh! My butt! Oh. My brain is finally starting to work again. It's... it's not a mushy mess anymore. Can you tell me where you put the manuscript? The manuscript... the manuscript... is in the crack over there. Oh, finally! Otherwise I was gonna have to blast some of my loudest rock and roll in his ears. Kazuha hesitated for a long time before making a move. He's so nice! Everyone, let's search the stone cracks nearby for the manuscript. Found it! Congratulations! We found the key to solving the problem. Let me see. Just as I thought. This machinery, named Cognitive Mimicry, is capable of altering the state of people's brains. It was invented by the researcher we met earlier. His name is Persikov. According to the manuscript, the Fatui officials did not support Persikov's research. They believed he had taken the wrong path. But Persikov insisted on putting his machine to use. In order to achieve that, he disassembled the machine and used his connections to transport the parts to this deserted island. How did they find this island? <sighs> the Fatui's intelligence network is not to be underestimated. Persikov was dead set on carrying out his experiments on this island. Most of his subjects were junior Fatui soldiers who all signed a waiver beforehand. It looks like they really thought this machine would benefit the Fatui. How does the machine work? That's most likely top secret. The manuscript didn't reveal any details, but Persikov did mention that the machine was modeled after the power of a god. Does that mean there's a god connected to these dreamlike mirages and the Fatui found a way to research it? Clearly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to reproduce the god's power. 
Anyway, Persikov's experiment did not go as planned. The machine broke down just days after it was activated. They tried to fix it, but... The technologically illiterate Fatui soldiers completely ruined the machine. Even its most important component of all, the crystalline cores, got ejected and disappeared. A testament to the importance of maintenance in all aspects of life. I believe we can all learn something from this. Persikov may be a mad scientist, but he didn't want to see his subordinates suffer. Besides, if he didn't solve the problem, he would end up going insane as well. As a last resort, Persikov went out on his own to look for the cores. But he was just a sickly researcher, unfit for the task. He had to give up. Then, Persikov went searching for the soldiers who had gone mad and strayed from the group, and took them to a hidden cave. I think that was where they were at the day we arrived on this island. Persikov was taking a strong Fatui soldier somewhere. Yes. It took Persikov all of his strength to get all the missing soldiers into the cave. He tried to snap them out of it with music and poetry. But nothing worked. We came here once, but there was no one around. Come to think of it, that must have been the day Persikov was busy gathering the soldiers into the cave. There's good news and bad news written on the last few pages. The good news is, Persikov managed to figure out the location of the crystalline cores by piecing together the snippets of information he could get from the delirious soldiers. The bad news is, Persikov failed to revive them and eventually succumbed to the device's influence himself. The last few pages of the manuscript are just unintelligible drunken scribbles. <sighs> It appears that the responsibility for this issue now falls to my retainers and I. There's a map in the manuscript. The markings should indicate the locations of the crystalline cores. We've got no choice but to find the crystalline cores now! We've inserted all of the crystalline cores, Mona! Is that all we needed to do? I think so. That's what the manuscript says, anyway. Let's give it some time. Hopefully it'll return to normal. of our time. Hm. Apologize to me and my retainers at once. Uh-huh. Oh no, oh no, I, I'm out of here. Hey, hey! Don't leave me here on my own. Mr. Persikov's still there. We need to save him. <laughs> Those two definitely seem a little more lucid now. It looks like we succeeded. Then perhaps we should call it the Embassy of the Imanakreish and Dodo Land. Huh? No! That's too many words! Paimon would prefer something easy to remember. Come on, let's go home now. Ah, After coming home to a nice big meal, then having a long lie down, Paimon's finally starting to feel relaxed. <laughs> Is the hospitality of the Emanakreish to thy liking? Paimon's loving it. Wonderful. Main Fräulein invited you all here not only to witness the arrival of our Holy Land, but most importantly, she wished that you could all relax and enjoy the summer. Great. Well, I've come to the right place. 
I love it here. May this place become an eternal paradise. Main Fräulein says she hopes to go on more adventures with you here in the future. Of course! And you should come find me and Leo when you get the time. I'll show you around. Oh, also, my friend runs the best restaurant in Leo. I'm sure you'll love it. If you're into opera, you should go see Yunjin. She's the nicest person and she likes making friends with new and interesting people. I'm sure the two of you will have plenty to talk about with your shared passion for theatrics. Oh, if Lady Shinyan speaks so highly of it, then I must entertain the idea. Traveler, I have a suggestion. There's a snack called Roasted Lavender Melon in Inazuma, which goes rather well with fish. Why don't we roast some fruit and seafood for dinner tonight? Oh, did you try it in Inazuma? <laughs> That's great. You know, I want to follow your example and travel around the world. Hopefully, I can also make good friends along the way. That means a lot coming from you. Ah, you're all here. I've noticed an issue. Although we've fixed the machine, as you can see, the mirages on the islands have still not disappeared. Hmm, I've noticed that too. But considering it took some time for the mirages to appear, it may also take some time for them to disappear. Yes, that's definitely possible. In other news, my scryglass seems to be working fine now. The divination results are also looking about right. Although... Although, there are some parts in the results that I don't quite understand. It's as if there is some sort of power surrounding us, and it's still watching us. Do you think it's caused by the machine, or perhaps Persikov? Sorry, I'm also not sure. All I know is that the power is not hostile at the moment. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem to harbor any ill will toward us. Well, although there's nothing left to disturb us and we can finally kick back and enjoy our vacation, we still ought to be cautious while we're on these islands. I will keep seeing what the stars say every day. I promised Fischl that I'd be her guard. I can help. Good. I'll be counting on you. Goodness knows why those girls are so carefree about everything. I suppose it falls to me to be extra vigilant. Coming. Oh, so we're gonna call the tone deaf bard, right? Well, hello there, strangers. <laughs> you finally called. I thought you were having so much fun that you'd completely forgotten about me. Nope. Oh. Tone deaf bard, a whole bunch of really strange things happened. A strange machine that can imitate the power of a god? Wow. <laughs> I didn't know the Fatui had plans like that. Their imaginations are truly running wild. So, judging from your tone, it sounds like you don't know any more about this than we do. Alas. I am but a humble bard who sings for his mora in the tavern. Why would I know anything about it? Ugh, so annoying. <laughs> but other than that, did you two have fun? We did! We ate a lot of yummy food and saw loads of amazing things! It was really cool. <laughs> That's good. The point of traveling is to record any feelings stirred along the way. As long as you had an unforgettable experience, this journey has served its purpose. As for the mysterious voice, although we don't know who it was, not only did she not harm you, she also helped you to gain a better understanding of each other, right? If you look at it that way, maybe she meant you well. I mean, if she was able to intercept Alice's communication tool, I'm sure she's also plenty capable of attacking you. Hmm. Tundia! 
it is right. <laughs> I'm glad to bring you some peace of mind. Just enjoy your vacation to the fullest. And don't forget to tell me all about the marvelous mirages when you get back. I want to record all these beautiful memories and turn them into ballads. Every summer will become an unforgettable song. Then I'll just wait for your return. Happy vacationing! Hmm, if Tone Deaf Bard thinks it's okay, then maybe there's nothing to worry about. After all, Tone Deaf Bard is still a god. We should probably trust him. Let's head back. We don't want to keep everyone waiting. Hold on. Did Official say earlier that she's going to catch some crabs? Oh, Prima wants to go too! Now you have solved the mystery. Doesn't it make you feel happy? Satisfied? Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'm just a little bird that sometimes flies by these islands and am now watching you from far, far away. I just so happened to sense a power here that has something to do with me. I was curious, so I landed on the beach to quietly watch everything that took place on these islands. It was fascinating. The ones who came here to work were so busy and yet, I still saw genuine smiles on their faces from time to time. And then all of you arrived later on, bringing your glorious dreamscapes and wonderful willpower. Your dreams are like the pure and delicate bubbles floating on the water. The more beautiful the illusion, the more it fascinates me. I'm not able to travel myself, but I do admire free spirits like yourself. So, I helped them design a little something for you all. I hope you liked it. As I said, I don't have an agenda. I'm just a little bird. I stopped here to admire your lives. Joys, sorrows, and all. You are a special person with a unique and brilliant glow. I decided to communicate with you in this way because I'm really curious about you. There's no need to wonder about my name. Maybe one day in the future, we will meet in another place. When that time comes, I think you'll be able to recognize me. <laughs> What are you doing? The crabs don't catch themselves! 